everybody. Welcome. Pull up um, pull up a chair. We're going to get rolling now. Thank you for joining us. And before we get started, I'd like to do a quick sound check. I think we already did that. And um, I'm your host, Sherry, for today's Traders Exclusive Strategy Series webinar. Our experts today are going to be showing you how high probability trading strategies, key of which is the one minute multi-day VWAP, volume weighted average price reversal, how to eliminate uncertainty when you let price tell you what a volatile market is going to do, a reliable method to find the very best stocks that are beating the major indices, and how to trade a strategy that's immune to market volatility that can make money no matter what the market does and very much more than that. That's just one bullet point from each person who's gonna to speak today. I want you to check out our website, tradersexclusive.com. It's where we put our articles and video clips with valuable trading tips and techniques. And this is also where you're gonna find a recording of today's webinar. Before uh, we get started, you know I have to do the disclaimer. So what you need to know is you should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources. You may lose all or more of your initial investment opinions, market data, and recommendations are subject to change at any time. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And I'd also like to ask if um, uh, that you would please take notes, write your questions down with a little bit of context, but hold questions until after the presenters finish, unless he specifically asks you to talk to, you know, to answer a question that he's asking. So our first speaker today is Kenny the Warlock Glick of Hit the Bid. He is a veteran day trader. He's going to be bringing us the VWAP for your mind, but he's a veteran day trader turned educator and he's the founder of Hit the Bid. Kenny has seen all of the major ups and downs in the market and has successfully traded for over 25 years. His practices are simple, actionable short term opportunities hedged with risk management and all confirmed through VWAP. So I want you to welcome Kenny Glick and Kenny, I'm gonna turn you into the presenter and I'm also going to um, make you an organizer so you can see when people answer you. Uh, let's see, so there you are there. You should be able to share your screen now. All righty. And how you doing? Let's go. What was that fancy show screen number three? And boom, can you see me? Yes, I can see it very well. All right. All right. So you should be able to see if people are answering questions now and the entire planet. So do you see my screen? You see the hog trade. This is H O G Think or Swim. You'll see some scanners on the side going. You guys got the right screen. It. Yep, and UBS right, is showing there on the right. I shall, I shall break free now and uh, take it away. Enlighten your guys' lives. All right. So, what's up, everybody? Um, some of you guys can see me. Some of you guys can't. I, uh, <clears throat> I vicariously lived through Jeff Bezos yesterday, and I also became a cowboy. So I'm wearing a cowboy hat and dark sunglasses right now. Um, this time of the day is a great time for review. And that's what we do. Um, I run a room, a chat room. Basically, when chat rooms got started, I was there. I was also there as the poster child for day trading as well. And uh, circa 1997, I was a shady stockbroker. You've probably seen the movie, Boiler Room. That was my life. Um, you know, mix in a little Wolf of Wall Street. And I was very discouraged very, very quickly because I'm a nice guy, I'm an honest guy, and you know, once I saw how the sausage was made, I fled from the industry. Um, what happened right after that was a buddy of mine was opening up a firm and I told them my story. He's like, no, it's not gonna be like that. We're not brokers, we're actually going to be independent traders for the first time and you know, be able to manage our own money. And I was like, well, that sounds like something I'd be interested in. And what happened right away was I had good luck, okay? Uh, it was momentum trading at its best. You were just trading one setup. It was if the stock broke prior day high, you bought it and held on for dear life. 
welcome to trading. And everybody was making money. You had the pizza guy making money. Everybody was quitting their jobs. Everybody wanted to be a trader. 97, 98, 99, 2000. It was one trade, one trade. If the stock broke the prior day high, you bought it and then you held it. And pretty much it went up for basically two or three hours. You'd go sideways in the middle of the day. And then at the end of the day, you'd go back into trend and then rinse and repeat. 18 months later, I turned a $30,000 account into roughly a million dollars. And I was just an idiot kid not knowing exactly what was going on. If you Google me, they tried to shine my industry, the day trader industry, as a bunch of degenerate gamblers, <coughs> which we are, <coughs> but we didn't want to say that right away. But there I was defending trader nation uh, or day trader nation. Um, if you Google my name, Kenny Glick, I also go by a couple of other names on the internet. I'm also known as the Abraham of assets, the Baruch of bread, the Cain of cash, the David of ducats, the Elijah of earnings, the Frank of funds, for you Yiddish, I'm the Glick of gelt, but you could call me Kenny Glick or call me the warlock. Um, Google me, you'll see I was the poster child to this industry when I was about 27, I'm 50 now, I've been doing this quite a while. And what I do now is, let's call it circa 2012, 2013, because I made a considerable, amount, a considerable amount of money on the crash of 2000. Then I thought I was a super genius, even though I got smoked in 2001. But then when the government took the market over to save us in 2008 and 2009, which is what we're witnessing right now, the reason the market never goes down is because the government has stepped in and basically taken over capitalism and just continuously buys the market and keeps it going up and it seems like they're gonna do it forever. But again, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about how VWAP changed the way that I've traded right from where I was, I was thinking I knew what I was doing. And I was always a big shorter. I made money on the way down in 2000, I made money on the way down in 2008, and they were pretty good moves, and they were pretty awesome years for me. Uh, I love shorting stocks, I'm very skeptical, my mom, Jewish mom, pessimist. I was brought up where nothing was gonna go my way. Everything's gonna work out wrong. So it actually wasn't so bad to be a pessimist growing up because when things went my way, I was doubly surprised because I really didn't think anything would ever work out. So when I found volume weighted average price, it saved me from my bad short ideas. Because the first thing I noticed, and if guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking about volume weighted average price. We're going to call it VWAP from now on. VWAP. The first thing that I have found, the first thing I started noticing was that stocks do not like to stay down once they break over the VWAP. And the reason VWAP is the most important thing you'll ever put on your charts. And what you're looking at right now, the red lines are just prices from the from the pre-market, all I ever have on my charts are two lines. You're looking at the blue line, which is the one minute standard VWAP and your dotted orange line, which is a little formula that a friend of mine came up with just to grab some data from prior day VWAP. And from me reading the tea leaves and being the matrix and just being Neo and Morpheus and all those other characters from the Matrix and also Schwarzenegger, and I'm that skinny guy that came in after Schwarzenegger in Terminator 1, you know the guy I'm talking about. I'm that guy too. I built the system that we're trading on. And what I witnessed in 2013, when I basically almost blew my life apart, because I was a big shorter, I know the government stepped in in 2008, and we rallied to 2010, 2011, 2012. And at that point, I'm thinking, okay, when's the... When's the pullback? When's the correction? When is the mini crash that usually always comes after these monster moves? And I thought I was onto it. I thought I had my, you know, trade set up and I was completely, utterly wrong. And just before I had to, you know, cut that trade off, somebody was talking about VWAP to me. And they said, you know, Check out the levels where you were shorting the stock. If you were looking at VWAP, you knew you would have known not to be short. And then for me, as not the most, not the smartest guy in the world, I'm a curmudgeon. You know what that is? I'm very stubborn. You know, it's like a golf swing. 
you think you know how to swing and you go for that golf lesson, what does the guy tell you? You're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. Let me show you how to swing. And that's what happened to me in 2012 and 2013. I thought I knew what I was doing and I had some success, a lot of success. And then it really, really went wrong. And that's when I hit my bottom. And VWAP changed the game because the first thing I started to notice was that stocks do not like to stay below the volume weighted average price. And if you guys don't know, I don't want to get into the intricacies of VWAP right now. Google it. It's the most fascinating mathematical formula there is. It's telling you where the institutional money is going in and it's spitting it out with one number. So you know that number is more significant than any moving average, anything that you could come up with, because that's where the real money, the average of the real money, the institutional money went into the stock on a daily basis. By the way, hog might be a buy. It's coming up, just triggered our buy right here. Guys, we're in a live trade as we're speaking. We just bought hog at 41 bucks. As it approaches the one minute VWAP, and again, I don't want to pivot too quickly, but I'm also a live trader. This is what I do. I've been trading live in front of a studio audience since 2007. Thank you very much. If I had an applause track right now, you'd be hearing it in the background. I've been doing live trading since 2007. And my claim to fame is I don't sell anything. I let people witness what I do. And if you're intrigued, I ain't gonna ask you for any money. If you're intrigued, if you're intrigued, stick around for a couple of weeks. I don't want your credit card. I don't want any cash. I don't want a blood oath. I just want one thing. Show up, pay attention, ask questions. Because after you hang with me for two or three weeks and you see what I do, you're gonna want to know more. You're going to want to stay. So I just keep going. I just trade, I explain what I'm doing, and within a couple of weeks, you'll understand how significant these trades are because it's changed my life. And for me, it took 18 months of grinding and 18 months of sitting here watching these charts and getting trades wrong to finally admit to myself, you know what? I'm not doing anything else but this setup. And this setup is called the one minute multi-day VWAP earnings reversal. Let it sink in. One minute multi-day VWAP reversal. The one minute multi-day VWAP reversal. You're basically trading a gap on an earnings report. And I wanna talk about this for one more second. And I'm gonna say this again, and you're gonna hear me and again. If you do show up in my chat room and you do take you know, me up on this free trial for a couple of weeks. You'll hear me say this a million times. If you're buying options before the earnings reports come out, for instance, buying HOG, HOG, Harley Davidson calls or puts yesterday, you're a loser. You're a loser. Because if you don't know, the most expensive time to buy an option is at 359, right before the close, when the stock's about to report. And the reason it's a losing game is that not only do you have to guess what the stock's going to do, the option is at its ex most expensive of any time in its life. 359, right before they report, the worst time to buy options. So what do we do? We come in. And instead of being victims, we are the victimizers. Instead of being on the wrong side, we're on the right side. Instead of speculating, we're reacting. There is zero speculation. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a second. As soon as I put the trade on, aren't I speculating? You're hoping something happens? Yes, but you're more or less reacting to what is happening, not what you think may happen. So I'm gonna spend the next, let's say half an hour going through some of the trades that we did today. I'm gonna show you what we did and how we set up for it. And then I'll take some questions at the end, but more importantly, Google me, find me, love me, own me, exploit me, find me. Kenny Glick, hit the bid.com, the warlock. Find me, hang with me, see these trades live, 
Because when I'm going to show you what we did this morning, you shouldn't believe it. You should be skeptical. You should be like, uh-huh, yeah, we've heard this story before. And I'm glad. I want you to be skeptical. I want you to be jaded. I want you to be cynical because I am. Trust no one in this industry. No one. I shouldn't be trusted, but I will earn your trust by giving you access to me for two or three weeks. Isn't that amazing? I've got this dangling carrot here. You want to buy this carrot? Wait, how about I give you the money to pay for the carrot? Here, now the carrot's free. Boom. That's my that's the way I roll. So let's go through some of these trades. And some of you guys over there by the bull, you know what I'm talking about. Speaking of bulls, we're talking about hogs. So this morning, when everybody's losing money on their calls and puts because they paid too much for them this morning, what do we see in the hog right here? Let me just go back to this chart. Your blue line is the one minute VWAP, double, double orange or spotted orange is what we'll call, just let's call it the multi-day. All right, right here. So you had a good number. All the people on Yahoo Finance are buying the stock because they think that's how to trade the market. Good number means the stock's gonna go up. Eh, no, it doesn't, it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. You could have a blowout quarter. You could make the most money in human history like Goldman Sachs did and Goldman Sachs sold off 12 points out of the gate because there's always a seller on the news. People buy the rumor or the anticipation and they sell when they've won. So Sparky over here or Dave, Dave's got hog at $38 because he was anticipating a nice run into this report. So what is they? what are the owners of the stock who came into the report going to do to claim victory? They're going to sell. And that's when we come in. Give me a reason to sell and I'm going to join in. I'm not speculating. I'm joining in. So look what happened. As soon as this stock gapped up, I draw a line at the highest mark where it hit pre-market. So that's 750 in the morning. I think we're all awake at that time, right? Boom. Next thing you know, you're breaking BWAP. The stock's already telling you that the sellers are out there taking their profits. So what do we do? We short the stock. We short the stock. And look how it trends down almost to the double orange line. You know what that is, my friends? Again, this is a $45 entry and the stock got down to 44, right? You know what that is, my friends, on 400 shares? That's 400 bucks. That's a day's pay. It would take you 295 hundred years, if that's even a number, to make that in a bank. And we did it in about a half an hour. Most people, what do they make on a daily basis sitting in their cubicles? 60 grand, 70 grand a year. At $400 a day, you're making about what? Uh, 125, 130,000, you just worked for eight minutes, but that's not where it even began. It was only getting started because you couldn't trade options in the pre-market. Now, following through on this trade right here, let me show you what we did right out of the open. Now, again, you gotta understand the market is open from four o'clock in the morning, basically to 8 p.m. And then you even have aftermarket. You have, you'll have almost 24 hours of trading nowadays if you know where to look and know where to go. But a lot of people only know the 9.30 open. And the 9.30 open could be a shock, a doozy of a moment if you don't know what's been going on pre-market. But we do because we're watching. Under the VWAP, you flirted with the multi-day, you know if a stock breaks the one minute and the multi-day, the trend is set. So no matter how good those hog earnings were, you got to be a seller or a shorter or a put buyer. Okay? So now you're breaking the multi-day and you're also breaking the pre-market low. Hammer this stock. Now look at what we did. We got back involved 
at 43.75 and the stock tanked to 42.50 in two minutes. How you doing? We crushed it on that trade. And that's where the party just started getting started. And by the way, if you're in the hog long, we're like in the hog. We are in the hog long now. And again, this is what day trading to me is all about. Being able to trade one name, short, short, and now you got a reason to be a believer on the upside. All right? But I want to walk you through this trade, and I'm going to walk you through the other five or six that I did today. And then I'm going to invite you to ask me some questions, and I'm going to invite you to a party that I'm throwing tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. Hopefully you can make it because we're going to party. We're going to drink. We're going to talk charts and options, and we're going to have a good time. And then I have a DJ that shows up at 10 p.m., and we dance it out. That's what we do. That's what we do. So let me show you why this trade was so significant, because a lot of people are scared of the opening candle. <laughs> oh, my God, I missed the whole thing. Did you? Did you miss the whole thing? No. Look how the stock retraces. And again, you have to take my word for it because the VWAP is a living, breathing index or a, I don't even know what you want to call it, but indicator. It came back, double topped right two or three cents away from the VWAP. What that is called is the kiss back. This is the stock testing who's in control. And as it gets over there and it tests the VWAP, my friends, and it doesn't break it, that gives you another shorting opportunity. And then this time, now we've got the options to play with. So when it rolled back over, we're buying the $43 puts. So let me show you that trade. By the way, if you're on Thinkorswim, let me show you a neat trick. You go in this drop down menu, you put hog in there, and then you go 43, and you'll see the option contract that I'm talking about, what it did. We were buying these option contracts for a dollar, and look where they went, a dollar 50 in one tick. That's 50% on your money in basically a minute and a half. It would take you 3. trillion years, 3.7 trillion years to make that in a bank. And here we're doing it in one minute. Same trade, same stock, even better result. Now take a look at what the stock did if you were only trading the stock. H-O-G, you got smoked. But guess what? Let's say you cover on your way down and let's say you put some stops here. I don't like stocks coming back out of the bottom range, but look where the trade went. I do not draw the blue line. The blue line is a living, breathing indicator. This is what we got. You got another attempt and a failed attempt. And what does that tell you as a VWAP trader? You got to be looking to short the stock again. And then OMG, you got paid three different times monster trades on VWAP breaks. Let me show you some more. So HOG, phenomenal action. Okay. And by the way, if anybody's wondering, the market never goes down. I know you guys are out there. You guys are wondering. I don't care if they come up with a Delta variant, an Omega Mu or a lambda 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 variant this market is controlled by the government don't doubt it and if you ever think about shorting this market make sure you're watching vwap and multiple time frame vwaps because if you short this market you will be out of business out of a career out of money you'll be on the street and broke google this video that i made don't fight the fed i wrote a song about it because that's what I did in 2012 and 2013. And I almost paid, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So let me show you what I do and how I stay in business. All right. Now you're all looking at NURO today, right? You guys are dying for me to talk about it. It's hard for you guys right now who don't know what happened this morning to believe that we were in this trade before it all got started. 
but I want to show you why we were. And all those price levels are where we were getting out of it. Sadly, we were selling into the move. Nobody was in it in the 30s. A couple of guys were. But what we have here is your VWAP consolidation. So here's NURO for you guys playing in Sri Lanka. Let me zoom in. This is what we call the Kardashian bottom. You see the blue line? This could be considered one big fat butt cheek. And here's another butt cheek. There's the crack of your ass. The Kardashian bottom. The bigger the butt cheeks, the better the breakout. The bigger the base, the bigger the breakout. Butts. Crack. It got there. You consolidated. VWAP is your protector. It never broke down under VWAP. And here we go. Off to the races it went. And let me give you another tidbit of information. If you're trading momentum stocks like this one was, VWAP got you in at a great price. But the real kicker was the classic momentum. When we first started talking, what did I say was the first trade that everybody used to do? Prior high break. So now you're getting justification to buy the stock. You got your VWAP on your side. You're breaking out of the pre-market highs. Now you're going higher. And there, when it broke the pre-market highs, that was when you had to get involved if you were not involved yet. So once again, VWAP's telling you it's okay to be trading this stock. And then you got this massive breakout. And again, my target on the stock, if you could believe this, and I know it's hard to believe, but I said the stock will go to either $25 or $58. So I basically got it right. Unbelievable move. This stock was eight bucks. It was 80 cents a couple of days ago. Hit 38 bucks. We don't have time to get into the whole rigmarole about reverse stock splits and why there was such an illiquid name and why this did what it did. That's for you to show up on a Thursday or show up next week and hear more of what I talk about. Today, I wanna just show you what we did and how exciting it was. So UAL, okay? UAL, okay? Got your numbers are out. The airline industry is recovering. Fantastic. Chopping around, doesn't break the pre-market lows. Choppity, chop, choppity, chop, choppity, chop, chop. But then it breaks over the VWAP and it breaks over the chop zone, buy it. So we're buying this thing at 47.70. And where does it go? 48, we're selling some. We got 48.50, we're selling some. And at 48.94, we're thinking 49, but then it rolls over and we sell it on the way back down at the same levels we sold some on the way back up. And then the final curtain is, do we ever let stocks break back below the VWAP without getting out of the rest and what? going short. So one name, long because it's over the VWAP, over the range, hey, you get profits, you get stopped out, and then wait a second. Is this an earnings report breaking the VWAP? I better go the other way now. So we shorted the stock here and look where it went. Stocks revisit areas from whence they held prior. So this stock went full circle. We made money on the way up and we made money on the way down. This chart pretty much exemplifies why I don't invest in the stock market. I'm not going to put my money into this shell game when one day the government's going to step away and all these stocks are going to be down 50%. I'm not doing swing trades. I'm not holding stocks overnight where I'm in the hands of the matrix. I don't know what CEO is going to be indicted or some offering is going to dilute some name that I decided to hold overnight, some biotech stock that I know nothing about. These stocks and this market is paying you every day in huge, huge percentage gains. Because every one of my trades, I trade liquid names. I trade stocks that have options. Any one of my trades, these one-minute multi-day VWAP reversal trades can be used with options. So let's go. Let's power through it. Now, guys in the back, guys in the back, 
You know I trade earnings. You know I love them. What stock do you think I traded today with deadly accuracy, deadly accuracy, where statues should be erected in my name? I traded it so well. That's right. You knows it. Net to the flicks. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So let me let me go through the process. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take these red lines and I'm gonna get rid of them. So what you want to do for an earnings report to get really acquainted with volume weighted average price, you also have to look at other prices. You see this little candle right there? You see that little tiny candle? You see warriors? You see this one candle? Highlight that candle. What's the bottom price? 522.50, not 521.83. Not 524.06, a big fat half number. Draw your line. Your pre market lows are the trigger. Now, I also want you to go back and look at what happened in the aftermarket session. The aftermarket session, Netflix got slammed, went down to a big fat whole number, 496. Not a coincidence. These half numbers and whole numbers are not coincidences, right? Here you go. 496, bang. There's your high, 537. I want to mark that off also, right? You got the pre market. And now I want to look for other areas of concern, as I call them. Well, that's concerning right there. It hit it once, it hit it twice, it hit it three times, and it held. Let's draw a line right there. And let's take a look at some of the other prices that it held in the aftermarket. Okay, it held that spot. Now I've got the roadmap. I've got prices that it hit on the way down. I got the price where it hit on the way back up. And then what do I have? I've got my roadmap. And then of course I've got what? I've got my VWAP. I've got my VWAP telling me, you probably should be a seller of Netflix short because they reported earnings. And the stock is breaking the one minute. And right in that same moment, you also broke the multi-day. Because this time you had them nearby. Because the stock had been consolidating over the last couple of days. So you got your one minute. You got your multi-day. Now, again, did I short it up there? No. But my God. How about 422.50? So now you got your one minute multi-day VWAP. We call this the finger of God. Pointing down the knuckle, the rollover. VWAP's telling you what side of the trade to be on, breaking the range at 522.50, and then breaking down under that big number, 520, that it held prior market. And then look where it went, my friends. Look where it went to the prior low candle after that. So once we got through the 520, our next target was down at 511. Let's give it up for me, building statues, changing lives. We were three for three, and really we're six for six already because we traded UAL twice, we traded HOG twice, sorry, three times, and we traded Netflix once. If you're not having one of the best days of your trading career today, call me. If you're not having the one of the best years of your life, email me, call me, find me, I'll save you. And I'll do it for nothing to a point. Inevitably, you're going to do well enough where you're going to want to give me money. Not only are you going to want to give me money, you're going to want to name your children after me. You're going to want to get a back tattoo with my face on it. So let's go. Give me the other names you think I was trading. All right. Now I'm doing this. Uh, we're, 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 we're wide. We're, we're, we're worldwide. Come on. You know the names. Give me those names. It will, well, BTU was, of course, one of them. Come on. You guys know the names I was trading. I'll give you a hint. They reported earnings. I'll wait. I'll wait for the guy in the back. We went over UAL. We went over HOG. We went over Netflix. There you go. XM. Now, here's my favorite part of this trade. I have zero knowledge of what this company does. 
I saw XM. First thing I'm thinking, it's XM satellite radio. I know it's not, right? I know it's not. I don't care what it is. It's a price and a report. So once again, do we buy options before earnings reports come out? No. Are we speculating what this stock's going to do? Absolutely not. We're reacting to what it is doing. What it is doing. So you know they reported. That's all you care about. You saw it explode out of the gate. Okay. It hits a new high. Look at the, by the way, look at the number it hit. Basically a whole number, algorithmic print. And then suddenly it hits the VWAP, but bounces. Oh, I guess the buyers are still in control. And then one minute, two minutes, three minutes later, it's breaking VWAP and breaking those bottoms of those candles. And now we're shorting the stock. We have zero knowledge of what Qualtrics International dot com is nor do i care nor will i ever care because i'm done i won't look at the stock anymore because i conquered and now i move on so once you break the vwap the sellers come in right there so whatever this stock is oh my god it was just hitting new highs now it's rolling over don't be a victim trade the vwap Short this stock. Your stops are staring you right in the face. The two points where it stopped going up there and there. You're shorting it because it's breaking the VWAP and breaking the near-term lows. And then look at this candle. That was us. And before you knew it, one minute, multi-day, full-blown reversal, you're getting paid. Guys, I've been trading my whole life. I've never seen anything like this before. And I know it's absurd when people throw out percentages. This trade works 80% of the time. Not, what if I told you it worked 100% of the time? It's absurd to even say that out loud. But so far, this earnings season, we have found 14 of them and all 14 have worked. So far this year, every time this specific situation comes along, the trade actually works. Some are better than others. Some you have to inevitably get out if VWAP tells you to get out of the trade. But more often than not, these trades continue to work. And here's another one. So check a look at what we did here. We got paid, paid. And then look at the double top it hit again. Tries to get over the VWAP and fails. So if you missed it on the first move, you got to short it again. And then look what happens. Think of the VWAP as a magnet. Once you overshoot it, you revert. It's mean reversion. There'll be no math on this quiz. That's basically what it is. Stocks want to go where the most money had been going into the stock. That is volume weighted average price. So now I want to do something and I'm going to experiment with this live. Give me any symbol you want me to look at and I'll show you how more often than not, there's a VWAP story involved. My favorite trade is when there's earnings because that is when you get the most volume. And volume weighted average price works better when there's more volume and more people involved. Most people are paying attention to their stock the day they report. So everyone's talking about AMC. Let's take a look. AMC. This one's been a little bit too choppy for me lately, but looks like today might have been a good day. No, nah, still choppy, but look at the beginning of the day. Look at the beginning of the day on AMC. Right here. So you see how it rallied to the VWAP and got rejected first? That's a moment of significance. And you see how it got smacked down? It even broke or kind of went back to the same level where it held in the pre-market. That's a bullish moment. But nothing's more bullish than what we're going to call this, this is the dip and rip. And VWAP's telling you, and it's telling the shorts, because the shorts were thinking, here we go, we're rolling over. 
and then three minutes later, oh, God, we're not. You better get out of the trade. Look what happened once you got over the VWAP and you broke the pre-market VWAP high. Wham. Who's getting paid on AMC? Your entry would have been 42.59. The stock went up basically three and a half points. How you doing? Give me any symbol except Beyond Meat, and I'll show you a VWAP story. Some stocks I just will never look at ever again because they have insulted me in my days. Now we're talking. There's a guy that knows what I like. That's right. Why are we talking about Verizon? How you doing, my friend? Now, again, I came in dying to short this stock because over the last three weeks, all I've been doing is on a tech support line with Verizon trying to figure out why my new set-top box doesn't work and why my internet keeps going in and out and how come I'm getting error messages. So I've been on the phone with Verizon for the last three weeks. I couldn't wait to short this stock. And then I read the headline. I see the CEOs on TV talking about how much money he's making. So I say to myself, good. I'm glad they're making money. I'm glad they had a blowout quarter. When do I short it? When do I short it? Earnings reports that break back under the VWAP are shorts. And then look what happened. Under the VWAP, under the pre-market levels, and down she went to where? Down she went to where? To the multi-day VWAP. So using VWAP and multiple time frame VWAPs and just getting familiar with where the stock has traveled between pre-market and the open, a couple of red lines, a one minute VWAP and something we call multi-day, which we can't get into the intricacies of it all right now. I promised there would be no math on this quiz. You are set for life. This is not investing. This is not setting up call spreads. This is being live. This is managing your money intraday, trading for the day, winning for the day. Live for the day. Live forever. So another one of my monster trades was BTU today. Everybody loves themselves some BTU. I think this is your next short squeeze candidate. Uh, we've been buying the stock since $1.10. My friends over at the Bull know what we're talking about. How great is this BTU? Because just like my women, I like them cheap and good. This stock is cheap and good. It moves. It moves. And if you have an $8 stock that's moving in 10% increments, there's not much better. Did you have to own this stock to participate in it? No, it gapped up slightly. But look what it did today. It gave you a VWAP test, a VWAP test, and then what did it do? It's confirming if the stock's above the VWAP and it tests it and holds it. I know there's a little slippage here. That's one cent. But more importantly, let's say you came back. You've seen the test of strength on the VWAP. By the way, Qs are almost at all-time highs. I mean, uh, again, let me take a quick side note. This market sell-off on Friday and Monday may have realistically been the lows of the year, possibly of the decade. Because if you haven't noticed, every time we sell off, they give it a name. Oh, well, we're selling off because of the Delta variant. Oh, we're selling off because of China's slowdown. Oh, we're selling off because of SARS, bird flu, Portugal, Spain, Crimea, Turkey coup. They keep giving it a name. And three days later, nobody cares because the government <laughs> is buying the market. The mm. only time this market's going down is when there's somewhere else to put money where you could actually make money on that money. And there's no other place but the market. All right. So let's talk about BTU for a second. These are just what you we call the tests. Minutes. But if you keep seeing the test, the test, the test, the test, and then it breaks out, there's your new buy. And your stop is the VWAP and those prior lows from the tests. So as long as you define every trade, and not every one of these is going to work, but when you're trading VWAP, my friends, your losses are limited as long as you stay disciplined and admit you're wrong, because that's a big part of trading. 
You'll take that $8 loss. Oh, I don't want to take an $8 loss. Next thing you know, it's a $100 loss. Well, I should have I, sold that a little while ago. Hey, now Kenny. It's loss. And now suddenly you own a stock overnight that you had no intentions of ever owning because you didn't want to take the loss. And then four hey, days later, you're still in the stock and now you're down in. what you should have taken an $80 or $80 loss. Now you're down two grand. Sound familiar? We've all gone through it. Don't do it. Don't let it happen. VWAP doesn't let it happen. Oh, wait, we got a live one. We got a live one. Let me see if I could find it. MRIN. Aha. All right. My friends are screaming MRIN. So why are they buying this stock? Well, first of all, look at the multi-day VWAP first gets broken back to the upside. Then you consolidate basically at the VWAP. And just when you think it's going to roll over, what did it do right there? It tests the VWAP, tells you that the buyers are still in control. And here we go. And here we go doing live trades. And here we go. So now where are your stops? Well, you put it at the breakout price, right? And if you just bought from $9.34, what do you do as a good trader? You sell some into this move. And then you put your stops at the levels from where it came. And then you set it and forget it. Again, I'm not in this trade because, again, I missed the big, I missed my entry here. I missed my entry here. We're doing a broadcast right now. I'm just giving you a couple of tidbits of information while we're doing it because we are trading live across the entire globe right now. What's up, Sri Lanka? What up, Bangkok? What up, Australia? Good to see you. And they are loading up right now because they know once you get over the multi-day in the one minute and consolidate and break out, these have been pretty good trades. And again, I'd still be selling into this move, but now you're looking for that $10 number and your stops are staring you right in the face, 944 and 932. And if you could define every trade you ever do, then you know exactly what your risk is. Every trade, there's risk reward oh i'm doing a broadcast uh, across all time and space right now but here we're looking at mrin so, okay well we're gonna have to yeah, pull it right here i appreciate not. your time if you have any stocks and i'm talking to you guys i'm talking to you guys at traders exclusive if you can type in some names if you guys are actively day trading that's what, that's what this is for this is not swing trading Okay, this is not investing. Let me see if I could get that chart room open. Hang on a second. I see hands going up. Ah, all right. I see nobody. <laughs> all right. I see if you have questions for Kenny, load them up. I'm willing to take questions. Again, it's all about you, enough about me. And like I said, email me right now if you don't get a chance. The warlock at hitthebid.com, or you can use my old AOL address, Kenny Glick at AOL.com. That's right. I have an AOL address. Make fun of me all you want. <laughs> so, all right, Sherry, guys, I don't you heard him. Questions. Aha, Chewy. Somebody wants to take a look at Chewy. One of my favorite stocks. And by the way, you're still in MRIN at $9.99. I want you to sell some for the love of God. Make sure you take your profits. I'm a seller at 975, and now you look for 999. So let's take a look at Chewy, C H W Y. I'd like to tell you how much I appreciated no, this, no, but I don't think you can now, hear right. me. But we're going to have to pull it because I got my next speaker coming up. So between the multi guys, and the one minute, Kenny and you broke and, the one minute. Uh, who's getting get with paid? Him about what he's telling that guy, you about. keep him coming, keep him coming. And thank you, sir. Nope, oh, I think I lost you. That was yep. it. All right. I kept going. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kenny. I appreciate you being with us. I'm sorry about that, but you didn't have a headset on. I couldn't tell you ahead of time. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I was I was waiting for the questions to come in. So I when I, I didn't see him. I was yeah. just like, okay, well, maybe I'm not in. All right. Well, I had you as an organizer, so uh, everybody should email you, but we have to move on to our next speaker. All and right. I, have a great day, everybody. I really everybody. appreciate you coming in with us. Have a no good problem. day. Good luck, y'all. Right All right. Now I'm going to bring in our next speaker who's been waiting patiently. Hold on one second, and I'm going to... Uh, yes.
Rick, hold on one second. I just want to tell everybody, if you have to leave early, we do have a recording available. You'll get an email from GoToWebinar and uh, you'll be able to see it at GoToWebinar's platform. Uh, within the next day, we do get it up to tradersexclusive.com forward slash archived webinars, uh, archived underscore webinars. So um, we'd like for you to check that out. And then our next speaker coming up is Rick Sadler. And he is with, come on now. There we go. Hit and run candlesticks. Bear with me, Rick. I'm just getting back together here. Um, I wanted to tell you guys about Rick because he's been with us before. We really love it when he comes. He's speaking to us today about trading in this volatile market. He's been trading and coaching traders for 30 years. And part of his goal in trading was to help others avoid the difficult lessons he's learned along the way. So he founded Hit and Run Candlesticks. And uh, to show an example of how to grow a small account, in January of 2018, he opened an account with 5,100 bucks. And since then, he was, has been able to grow the account 1,400%. Now he's teaching others how to do the same thing. All results are posted on his website, which he's going to share with us. And then, um, so Kenny, um, Rick, let me make you the presenter. And um, Rick, do you need to see questions or do you like to wait until the end? Hi, Sherry. How are you? I'm um, fantastic. I, how are I you? Would, <laughs> I would love to see questions. Um, All right. Because I would like to answer uh, questions if possible. All so right. I would love to. All right, so there we go. We're going to do that. There we go. Now I can see your screen. Wow. You got quite a few uh, pullouts there, don't you? <laughs> there we go. Oh, there you go. You see a chart? I see a chart. C-H-W-I. There you go. Yeah, yeah. All right, take it away. You've got um, 45 minutes from now because I know oh, it ran wow. over a little bit. All right. Yeah, Keep I've your headset on so I can interrupt yeah, you. I've got my I've got my <laughs> headset on. So so just give me a give me a five minute warning, maybe. <laughs> All right. I'll, I usually All will right. do it in the chat. Uh, okay. So just between you and me. So if you see it in the chat and thanks, everybody, for um, giving those notices in there and take it away, Rick. Thanks for being with us. We, we love it when you're here. Hey, uh, really, Sherry, thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Traders exclusive for doing this. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Thanks to all the other speakers here. Um, I, I think what we do is fantastic. So great. Uh, thanks for everybody here. Um, I see we have 140 people listening right now. So um, that's exciting. Please ask questions. I need to make sure I can see your question. So maybe somebody could just send a question just so I can see it. Show questions. Let's see. Somebody just say hi or something. I don't know that I, oh, there, I see a yes, thank you. So I know I can see see questions there, thank you so much. All right, so today uh, I wanna talk about the volatility market or the market volatility and how to trade a volatile market. And while I've got the SPY up now, and while you can see that the SPY has been trending, it is, it has been very volatile. I've listen to some of our members that hit run candlesticks and right way options. Uh, I've listened to people that are not members that contact me through uh, YouTube or email or, you know, uh, text sometimes. And they're having trouble keeping up with the market because sometimes it does change uh, overnight or change changes in midday or you get three or four days that just just really not doing a whole lot. And by the way, I would like to declare that I am a swing trader. Um, I like to buy in chart setups and I take profits on the way up. The way I take my profits is not the normal way of what most people do. Um, I look at what it takes for me to double my account in 12 months and do the math on it, do a little, little math magic there. And we, we come up with a number that I have to make. So I'm always taking profits into strength. Okay, but we're gonna talk about this volatile market. And let me share something with you that you're probably not going to like because I find most people come to these webinars, you're looking for that 
the next best thing. You're looking for that that uh, perfect trade setup, which I am going to show you that. But let's talk about trading volatile markets, okay? Number one, know your limits. It's got nothing to do with the chart. It has nothing to do with the market. It has nothing to do with somebody looking over your shoulder and knowing what your trades are, because that's not true. It's you. It's you, okay? So seriously, know your limits in the market. Know when to get in, know when, know when to trade a market, not when to get in, that's different. Know when to trade a market, know when not to trade a market. Uh, a lot of times people will uh, join a service or open up a brokerage account and put money in it. And for some reason, for some reason, when we start this trading, we think we have to trade every single day. We think we have to trade every minute of the day. But yet when you had a job nine to five and you punched a clock, or maybe you still do, you're doing everything you can to get away from that job. But not when we trade. We have it in our minds that we have to trade every, every single day. And please, you really do not need to. In fact, if you were to go back and look at your look at your uh, a snapshot of your trades, your wins and losses. And if you were to match it up with say the market and my market, by the way, I use the SPY primarily. Um, if you were to match it up like this, uh, I would almost bet that you are, uh, you're trying to go fight a long trade because you're trying, you, you're, you're trying to get in there and force something that's not going to happen. The market's shooting down here. So now what happens is you start trading to the, you, you see this and now you want to jump in uh, short, boom, 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 boom. But what happens is the market starts moving up. Whoops. Oh, well, we'll do it that way. Market starts moving up and you spend your time spinning your wheels. So you just simply have to know when, what your limits are and where you need to be trading at. Okay. Um, know what you can handle and know what you can't handle that's one of the tricks to trading honestly i think making money in the market is pretty darn easy now i know some people are probably thinking i call bs on rick well making the money is relatively easy it all makes sense it all should work where the majority of us fall down is controlling our losses that's that is the, one of the big keys there so uh, in a volatile market is this market for you today because tomorrow it could be co totally different is this market this week for you you know yeah is this market for you moving down say you're somebody that never or you don't particularly like to trade short maybe and we start moving down here and you're just bound and determined to trade. So what you do is you trade to the long side and you constantly lose money. That's, the, that's what we have to learn to step away from. You don't have to trade every day. Uh, stick with what you know and, uh, um, you know, just trading is common sense. And sometimes you just have to get, get out of the, uh, get out of the way of the bus. Don't let the bus run you over. All right. Okay. So um, one last thing on this, and this is something that I said to the members of Hit Run Candlestick just a couple of days ago, and I also said it again today. Uh, it, it's a it's a phrase that I've never said before up until a couple of days ago. Um, but don't let anyone, please, me, anybody, nobody, don't let anyone bully you into a trade. Don't do that. Look, we all get emails. We all get alerts. We all get, um, you know, the we, we, we look at social media. We get these, these, these ticker symbols falling from the sky all the time. Don't let that bully you, okay? Make sure that when you're looking at a chart, oh, you can certainly look at those trades. Good Lord, I do. You know, I hey, somebody wants to throw a, a ticker symbol at me, I'm going to look at it. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. And it has to meet my criteria. Now, I'm going to show you some criteria here in a minute. But I think more importantly is just don't 
just because, uh, for instance, let me give you an example here. Uh, members of Hit and Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options, they, uh, they can download an app. It comes with a membership and we post every trade we make. Uh, for instance, yesterday I posted that we bought, what was it here? I posted, oh, where is it? Here it is. Bought the uh, INO September calls, September 40 calls. There we go. So that's what we post and goes out to you instantly when we uh, place a trade. So I bought INO here yesterday, sold half of it today, and we put that out there as well. Uh, this morning when I sold half of that trade. Um, but that doesn't matter. doesn't matter who's buying it. And yeah, the members get a an alert. Here's what we did. But that doesn't mean you should trade it if it's not your trade. So don't let anybody bully you into a trade. All right. Um, okay. So let's look at some charts. Let's keep things simple. And I have to tell you, I think I'm a pretty darn simple trader. I think I am. And um, let's, uh, I want to make a change over here in the scanner I am using. Let's change that to right here. Oh, and primarily, uh, primarily I use um, daily charts. That's my primary chart. I trade from a daily chart. Um, I, pretty much do everything from a daily chart. I will pull back to a 130 minute chart and I call this my three bar chart. That's what uh, INO looks like here uh, on the three bar chart. And it's just a 130 minute chart is all it is. And it will build three candles in a day. It will break the day down into three, three pieces. I will also look at the 15 minute chart, not so much on charts, but I do look at the 15 minute chart say on uh, the spy, the cues, diamonds, things like that. Um, just so we get an idea of what is going on in the market. I'm a big believer in uh, the market has to have your back. I'm a big believer in if you're gonna trade long, the market needs to be long. I'm a big believer if you trade short, the short, the, the market needs to be short. Um, why try to swim? I mean, salmon, you know, they swim against the current and they die. It's just a fact of life, okay? You know, they swim against the current, they lay some eggs, and they die. That's it. So let's not swim against the current. Let's not die. Uh, we we want to make things as easy as possible. We don't want to be we don't want to be uh, rolling the dice. You know, we're not here in the for the we're not in the business of rolling dice. We we're in here in business of putting the odds in our favor and putting the market on your side. I think is a positive thing. So, um, all right, I'm going to go look at this chart right here because this chart right here, we, we for anyone that's familiar uh, with our trading here at Hit and Run Candlesticks or even Right Way Options, you know that we use something called the three H trap a lot. Well, the three H trap is the three exponential moving average and the uh, uh, what we call the T-line. It's the eight exponential moving average, which really all a trap is, is trapping price between two moving averages. They can be any two moving averages you want. Um, consistency is the key here, okay? Consistency. But I want to go back years and years ago, and I want to tell you about the origin of the trap, which it wasn't called that back then. And I want to give credit to one of my mentors. He's no longer with us. Uh, and some, if there's any old timers in here, especially if you're an old timer and you use TC2000 back when it was an old DOS program, then you might remember the name of Oz. His name was Oswald, Cost Oswald Costella. Uh, everybody called him Oz and he was one of my mentors. Um, and he's the one that introduced me to the idea, which, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident he did not come up with it, uh, but he introduced it to me when I first started trading within my first five years, I guess. And it has been a beautiful chart. It has been a fabulous trading chart. 
and we have fine-tuned it to even make it um, what we think is better. Um, and it consisted of the 20 day simple moving average. And you know what? I could, nope, that is, yeah. The 20 period moving average and the 50 period moving average. And what he was doing, he was trading price inside that area, trading from the 50 to the 20, maybe taking some off the table, maybe reevaluating the, the, um, um, chart pattern, how price is doing with that 20 period moving average and may or may not keep it depending on what price is doing. And all we're doing is we're looking for charts that, there we go, um, charts that have rallied up and then charts that have pulled back and then we want to see buyers step in. And when you think about it, all that's doing is making a chart that looks like that one of the most popular charts in the entire stock market. More people probably follow this pattern than anything. So if so many people follow it, why do we want to do the same thing? Because I think we can perfect it and I can help you perfect it. Now, there's no question in my mind other people have done the same thing, okay? Um, one of the keys is, you know, looking for that trend, letting it pull back into a decisive area then we wait for price action, we start buying that price action and we make money on the way up. It's that simple. Um, now, what, what I do is uh, I use um, right here, um, I use a scanner to do this. I'm not gonna talk much about the scanner today at all. Uh, if you wanna know more about it, please come on over to Hit and Run Candlesticks. Uh, send me an email, shout out, be glad to share it with you. In fact, in fact, I, I'll arrange it so you have some time to try it out for nothing if you want to email me out, uh, email me and do that. And I just remembered one of the most important things today. Oh, I just remembered. I, I was supposed to do this first thing. I do apologize. Let me share this with you, please. Um, how many people here would like a computer free, a $3,000 computer? If you go to our website, hitandruncandlesticks.com, if you, just to the home page, if you scroll to the bottom here, right there, and just click on that. Uh, next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, we're giving away a $3,000 computer from Falco, Falco, Falcon Computing. Um, we did this also in April, and we're doing again. Uh, comes with, uh, uh, what is it? Four, four 24 inch monitors, extra long cables. It comes with a stand, keyboard, uh, I guess a mouse and uh, a whole lot of other stuff. And you get to tailor it. So if you want actually 27 inch monitors, you can get 27 inch monitors. Uh, if you want uh, six monitors, you can also get six monitors. If you want a bigger, badder computer, then you can get a bigger, badder computer. But we're going to give you $3,000 toward whatever you choose here, but you have to register. So make sure you click on that little thing right there. And this was for the month of July here and just fill out that registration form, click register and boom, you're, you're, you're there. You don't have to be present to win. Uh, and this coming Tuesday, Tuesday night, we're going to give that away. Okay. So please everybody do that. All right. So, Let's talk about the trap a little bit. Um, I'm not a big user of indicators. I'm not a big user. I, um, I'm certainly not going to bash them much. Uh, in fact, not at all. Uh, I, I just like simplicity. Um, I, like, I like finding charts that are trending up. Um, I like finding charts that are, that are trending and pull back. Uh, into an area, MLAB, there we go, uh, and pulling back into an area that I like, okay, that I like to trade, an area that I have specified. Um, and in this case, this is a 3H trap here. Let me show you that chart. Whoa, back to the daily here. And we're going to put that 3 EMA up there so that you have the 3H trap. There you are. See how price has rallied up and how it's pulled back. We're inside that trap right now. 
Uh, none of these stocks, by the way, are um, um, uh, being showed to you as a buy. Now, there's a chance I buy something while we're here, but I'm going to have to find it first, okay? I'll find one. If, if I do, I'll certainly let you know. Um, so this is a 3H trap. This, these dotted red lines here, this is our trend indicator, and you can see the trend line. It, it, it's on, we, we can pull it on TCNet. It's there all the time if we want it. Um, um, or TC2000, I guess. Um, so you can clearly see we have a trend, even the 50 period moving average is trending up here. And price has trended up, and now price has pulled back into that little area right there, and it's that 3H trap. And that's the type of charts that we like uh, to trade. Um, charts in a specific area, and if if um, if it's not in that area, then I don't want to trade it. I don't, if it's not in one of my traps, I don't want to trade it. I will wait because it will eventually get there. That I guarantee you. Um, I don't ever want to chase anything. You know, I I. I just realized here is this click to read your oh click to in read unwritten messages. Oh man. Look, I, I don't know if I'm getting questions here. I'm not uh trying to avoid anybody. In fact, I would love to answer questions. Just I don't know how to do this. Um I'm here, Rick. I can well, pass okay. them over to you instead of you having to try to pay oh, attention to that you. and still talk. Thank you. Yeah, just if you have a question, just shoot it out to me. Okay. Um, thanks, Sherry. Okay, so um, I, I think this is keeping things pretty simple right here. Let's go look at LQD. And this is what I do all day long. I look for charts that pops up on our scanner that meet our criteria where this is one I might put on a watch list, but I'm not overly interested in trading it at the moment because I don't like the price action. You can see the trend is clearly up and you can see that we are in a 3H trap, uh, but it's not really doing what we want to do here. In fact, at the moment, I'm wondering, check on the market. Let me go look at the market here. Uh, I'm going to go, Pete, here's that. I'm going to go look at that 15 minute and we're pulling back a little bit. By the way, that's a nice 15 minute 3 8 trap in uh, the SPY there. Yeah, we're coming out of a 3 8 trap right here. Uh, let's go look at that. Uh, did we already look at that? IQV. IQV. There's IQV. See, this is in the 2050 trap. And you can see this is the 50 period moving average right here. There, that cleans it up a little bit right there. So you can see we're in that trap. So actually, this is a chart right here that I'm going to flag for consideration. So you can see that downtrend we've got happening here. We're going to put a, a trend line here. Now, the only way I'm going to buy that is if it turns bullish. I don't, uh, I leave me one sliver, okay? I, I would like to say 100%, but leave me one tiny, 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 tiny little back door just in case there's that time I do it. Uh, but it is very rare that I buy a stock that's down like this. Um, I would rather wait till we have a green candle, something like that. But I do like the way this is acting. Uh, I do like where we are in the trip trap. So I'm going to put this on the watch list. And the way I do that is I come up here and flag it. So now I have it. And later today, I'll go through them and look at them, uh, things like that. Um, uh, Fubo here. Let's look at Fubo because I'm in Fubo and uh, Fubo here. We're down. Here's that, that, that 2050 trap. We rallied up, we pulled back below the 50. We're coming back into it now. And this is one that I'm going to be adding to, uh, if it starts to break out of that trend line here. So I'm very happy to see it back in the trap area right now. We've got a nice little bottom built here, and I'll certainly post that out to our members when I add to it. Uh, now, I happen to think Fubo uh, could easily go back up here and 
we're looking at a 30, 30 and a half percent trade on this. Um, oh, now we're getting some, so we don't always get green arrows, you know, things, different moments, different things happen. So there's uh, Fubo. And by the way, I have this set to alert on the 15 minute. And I did that mostly for this webinar. So we had some good activity in here. Uh, we don't want it to go slow. We only have uh, 30 minutes or so, a little more than that, 45 minutes, I guess, um, to take a look at it or to have this webinar. So I didn't want it to go too slow. Look at CD, CXC here. We're in that 3H trap. Let's get rid of that line right here. And also, I think it would be wise to draw a line like that right there. Now, you're probably wondering why it came up here. Take a look at that 15-minute chart. It did when it when it popped up a new high here. So we'll let it bake a little bit more. We'll let it cure a little bit more uh, and see if it starts to work. See, here's Dash making a new high on a 15-minute. And then here's the daily, and here we are in that trap. Now, I look at Dash, I see a couple of dojis. I see a bullish engulf. I see an awful nice, nice chart here, extremely nice chart, actually. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line right in there. I like that. Earnings are not till August, so we're good with that. I believe I'll flag that. I'm not going to buy that today. So that's that's kind of what we do and try to, you know, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, it's very hard to share everything that we have to share in the 45 minute time. Uh, it is extremely hard. Uh, so I'm trying to stuff some in here and I hope, I hope, I hope you come check us out and, and send an email, ask questions and, uh, uh, maybe we can, uh, set up something for you. Here's parts. Take a look at parts that came up on that scanner. There's parts right there. We've now broken out. So I'm not, I'm not interested in buying parts right now, PRTS. And the reason I'm not is I never want to buy anything that has been up for three bars. However, I am going to do this. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a line right there basically using the top of this candle and just slightly below the bottom of this candle. Over here, I just noticed that looks like some pretty good support area. I like that. I like where it's set up. So here's what I'll wait for. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw something else on here because I know it has to be, and I can't do it when I draw the next thing. There we go. That's going to be our buy box. Remember when I said that I only trade stocks that, that fit my criteria? And I, I refuse to be bullied. You know, we have people in the trading room that are super traders and I see them all the time making money on X, Y, Z. And I might not be in the trade, but the trade may be doing this right here. Boom, boom, boom. And look, I am just, I am tickled for them. I'm excited for them, but that's not my trade to buy right here. You know, that, that's just, that's just not my trade. I, I, it's not my trade. I require uh, a pullback like this. And then I'm going to look for a buy in this area like that. So we have that that uh, low to a high to a higher low. And then we're going to wait for bulls to step in signs of bullishness. All right. So here's our buy box. Here's our three balls up bulls up. Uh, I'm again, like I said, I'm not going to get bullied into buying this by thinking, oh my gosh, I better buy it now or I'm going to miss the trade. <clears throat> when I first started trading, if somebody gave me money, I couldn't find the pockets in my pants to put it in. All right. It, 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 it's, you know, it takes some education to learn how to keep your money. It takes some education to learn how to trade. And I swear, somebody could give me money and I could not find the pockets of my pants to put it in. I would blow it because I didn't know what I was doing. One of the things I learned is let the chart come to you, your setup, never chase anything. So I'm gonna wait till that consolidation. I'm gonna make one change here that I am gonna do. 
Uh, let's get rid of that. There we go. We're going to open this up, actually go above that 20 period moving average. So now what I want is I want a pullback. And I want to see buyers. Now, a pullback doesn't have to be just like this. Probably a better word is a rest. Just rest. A rest can also be sideways. That's okay. And then we'll look for that breakout or that the, the buyers coming in. And the scanner helps us with those is what it does. When I say look for it, I'm not looking for squat. I'm allowing the scanner to do it for me. Okay. So when I see that, that's in my world. Okay. There's always the question of what if it doesn't pull back? That's okay. What if it does this? What if it goes up again? All righty. I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm tickled pink. Speaking of pink, I guess that's kind of pink, isn't it? I'm simply going to wait for the pullback or the rest. What if it doesn't do it again? That's okay. I'm going to wait. I never want to be bullied into buying a chart. I never want to be bullied into, oh, if I don't buy it now, I'm going to miss it. No, you won't. You won't miss a thing. And there's so many charts out there that are giving us buying opportunities. We don't have to necessarily buy this one. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I promise you that if you think this chart here can go back up to this high, which I absolutely think it could, I promise it will give an opportunity to buy somewhere along the way. Now, I love it when I hear from people that say something like this. Well, I want to buy the chart here because I'll make more money up there. If I was to bet every person that said that a steak dinner or a bowl of ice cream, that this is what's going to happen. I would get fat because I would be right too many of the times. Here's what happens. The person that buys it here generally gets scared to death and will jump out of it right there. I don't even know why they look at those lines up there. You know, I, I hear from all the time, people all the time. Okay, hey, I'm looking at PRTS. Do you think 2340 might be a target? Absolutely. I totally think so. But yet the stock comes up here and they run just scared, a little scared. The person that waits for a good quality chart pattern, which give me that pullback, there's your chart pattern right there, like that. This is the person that won't get too excited when it does start to consolidate a little here because you've got an actual plan you're not chasing because this is just absolute chasing. And then this person here is the person that gets the bigger money. The takeaway from that is let the chart come to you. Now, of course, you've got to know what you want, all right? Now, I can't necessarily help you with that uh, today. Uh, I can give you some ideas, you know, I want to see charts that rally up and pull back. Now, Facebook here, because we've got a top and because we have a pullback, I need to see this make a chart pattern. This was a chart pattern. I need to see the reversal chart pattern. We're not into buying bottoms. That that doesn't work for anybody. You know, if, if somebody says, oh, yes, it does, you know, five years from now, contact me, tell me. That's all you do is pick bottoms and it works for you and I'll buy you the steak dinner and a bowl of ice cream, okay? Uh, but the reality is buying bottoms don't work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this to make that low, which it has. I'll wait for it to make a high, which I have no idea if this is the high. It could come up right to that 20, make a high. And then I'm gonna wait for it to pull back and then we're going to to start looking for that trend. If I could give anybody a lesson on trading right now, here's the one lesson. 
is only trade stocks in a trend. And it, this, by the way, is not a trend, not on the daily chart. It might be a trend on a shorter time frame, but it's not a trend on the daily chart. A trend requires a low, a high, a higher low or double bottom, and then a higher high. So let's just assume this is the high right here. We need to break out of that line right there. And when we break out of that line, then this becomes the tradable bottom. If there's any takeaway, anything here today, uh, outside of signing up for that computer that we're giving away, take this one away, okay? Take that away. That will improve most trading right away. That one little thing. Stop trying to pick bottoms here. So while this is in the trap, and while it absolutely is, I'd rather wait for the pullback. Another way to trade that to trade this chart right here that's in this 2050 trap is if you don't care if it pulls back. But somewhere you've got to have a stop. For me, I would use this pivot low, probably the 250 period moving average. And if you were to buy it here, boom, you buy it. Well, what if it comes down? Remember, you can't care. I, I, I mean, you cannot care because the likelihood of this pulling back, I think, is humongous. So you're just saying, hey, it's in there. I'm buying it and I'm OK when it pulls back. If you are, cool. And then you simply wait for the bullishness. And now you see how that chart pattern is starting to develop. See how we break out of that high. Now we're good to go. So like I say, if you don't care, that's cool. Um, FSR yesterday, that was nice. I think this is nice today too. Take a look at FSR. See how we've broken that downtrend? But see how we're up? Well, we'll count, we're gonna count yes, day before yesterday, the doji is a bullish day because of bullish candle. So one, two, three days. I I can't buy this. It's in my area. Absolutely. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for that pullback. Where and I, I don't care if it comes all the way up here and pulls back. That's perfectly fine. And then we're gonna wait for that buy signal inside that trap right there. Inside that trap. Let's see what SQ looks like today. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, there we go. This is coming off our what something I have that it's called a uh, T-line bounce. Uh, and it's it's where it bounces off the T-line within a certain percent. And uh, man, that's looking pretty good here. But again, we're up three days now. So what we're going to do is let's just, you know, we'll just put it right there by bo buy box. And we're going to wait for it to pull back. And if it never pulls back, that's OK. That is OK. Um, let's see. Uh, ADSK. Look at ADSK. That's starting to break out here. So let's talk about a, a breakout trade. Um, oh, let's talk about uh, is it a fake breakout or a real breakout? I love this. Now, I'm going to disagree with a whole lot of people here, and there's a whole lot of people that I'm going to agree with, okay? And I'm okay to have my opinion, and somebody else is okay to have their opinion. Um, but I think there's things about trading that people try to people try to put on oh uh, well <laughs> i'm I'm trying to be really, really nice about this. Um, first of all, nobody in the world can tell you that is this a, a you know headed for a real breakout or fake breakout? Nobody in the world. Uh, no amount of volume is going to guarantee a real breakout or a fake breakout. No lack of volume is going to guarantee of a real breakout or fake breakout. No chart pattern is going to guarantee of a real breakout or a fake breakout. These are some things as traders we have got to accept if we are going to succeed. This is part of trading a volatile market. You've got to accept there are no guarantees in trading. Excuse me. And I know that while we want to look for the perfect trade, there is no perfect trade. There isn't. So is this going to break out? You know, all I can do is follow price. And truthfully, that's all anybody can do. Every trader out here, every, 
every single trader follows price. While some may say, no, they don't, the truth is they do. If they, take, if they take price off the picture and they're trading that line right there, they're still trading price because it took price to bring that line up. So, you know, let, let's, let's, let's not make stuff up and let's really trade what we need to be trading and we're trading price. So is that going to break out? I can't guarantee it is. I can say this though, that stocks in a trend will stay. This is fact. Stocks in a trend will stay in a trend as long as they stay in the trend. But once they break the trend, they're no longer in the trend. And that's all we have to work with. That is absolutely all we have to work with right here. So, uh, and my trend is the, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, this, this, this green dots here, uh, 17, uh, EMA, uh, right in there. So anyway, this is really all I have. And, uh, I, I, I do feel bad. We had some, a situation today line up and my, Granddaughter is here, and my wife has to go to the doctor. Ah, it's crazy. So, Ooh. Hey, Terry. darn, you get to do the grandpa thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, we did have a few questions that maybe I can. Um, okay. Uh, one of them, I don't know if you're going to be able to take it back to where it was asked because he did ask it quite early in your presentation. How do you sure. add the section on TC2000 with rising 34, rising 54, C is greater than 200 SMA next earnings? <laughs> um, you know, I, I couldn't, I, you can get the rising in there pretty good. I couldn't even begin to tell you how to do the next earnings. I have earnings posted up here so I can always see the earnings, but I couldn't, I, I mean, I, maybe there's a way, I just don't know how to do it on TC2000 to, you know, pull the earnings in there. Okay. All yeah, right. I, just, I mean, I just don't know that maybe you can, I don't know. And then um, someone else said you use three eights. He said three dash eight EMA rather than 20 to 50 MA. Um, I, my, my three, uh, EMA, my three eights trap, that's this green line and the T line is the black line. I use the three high uh, and I use the the, the uh, eight exponential close for the three eights trap. Uh, and I think you asked about the 2050. Uh, the 2050 yeah. is just the 20 simple and the 50 simple. That's all it is. Okay. All right. And John wants to know, how do you do the C greater than 200 SMA and the rising 34 EMA? Uh, um, uh, how do you do it? Let's see. Can you can you repeat that a little slower how and... And How I'm about gonna, if we do this? You know what? I know you've got um, you something the, else that you need to get no, to. Well, if we, we can have, have time, them email you. Sure. Yeah. And I'll write that code out for you. But and let's I mean, if you, see. you know, it's close, close greater than, uh, let's say, X, A, V, G, C, 34. Oops, 34. There we go. That's close greater than. So that's, I mean, that's the short of that. But if if somebody would email me, Rick okay. at ricksadler.com and that's Sadler, S-A-D-D-L-E-R. But if you would email me, I would, I would tell me what you want and I'll be more than happy to write that code out for you and send it back. All right. All right. Rick at ricksadler.com, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I really appreciate you coming oh. on. I've got everybody saying this was good. I want to watch this again. Oh, thank you, so, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a and, feeling you're going to get quite a few emails coming in. Well, and, and I'll tell you uh, what I'm going to do is we'll, we're going to open up the hit and run candlesticks and right way options trading room. If everybody sends me an email, I'll make sure I let them know when we open it up. We'll open it up for a couple of days so everybody can come in and just say hi, check it out. And please, everybody, sign up for this giveaway. We gave one away in in uh, in uh, April 
Uh, we and actually what we did is we gave away a three thousand dollar computer plus we gave away two Amazon gift cards. And Tuesday night we're going to give two Amazon gift cards away for two hundred dollars each, and we're going to give this three thousand dollar computer away. And you pick the computer. We're just basically going to put three thousand dollars toward it. So Great. even if you wanted a laptop, we can do that. So it just has to be with Falcon computer and. Um, that's the same computer I use, by the way, right here. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, you know, Sherry. I'm, Thank you, you so know much. I'm going to be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope All right. so. Thank All you, right. everybody. Tell Donna I said hi. Have a great I day. Will. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye now. OK, let's see. We're going to make me the presenter again. And you should be seeing our next Speaker coming up uh, is Jeff Tompkins. I misspelled his name multiple times, and I really apologize for that because I'm really, I'm really uh, sensitive about that because I have a weird last name before I got married, and uh, I I like to spell people's names right. So I'm really glad Jeff is here with us. Let me just tell you, um, he's going to be bringing us a message um, about. He's with Altos Trading LLC. He's going to be talking about the secret to beating the market using relative strength. Jeff is a professional stock options futures trader and hedge fund manager with over 20 years of experience trading the markets. Jeff's successful career led him to create Altos Trading LLC. I hope I'm saying Altos right. In order to help others achieve financial freedom through consistent and profitable trading strategies. So I want you to make them feel welcome. Um, remember, write down a little bit of context with your questions. Um, usually when guys are given their presentations, it's hard to keep a train of thought if you're reading questions. So if we can just hold that down. Um, let me see if I can find you. You're with us now, Jeff? I am here. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to make you the presenter. And how do you like to work? Do you like me to pass the questions to you, or do you want to be able to see them yourself? Yeah. So as you mentioned, uh, I, I've got a lot of really good stuff to cover, so I won't be able to uh, monitor the chat while I'm presenting. Um, okay. So yeah, if we could, if you could kind of keep a tab of any questions that come through, um, and then relay those to me the end, at the end, we will hold. Q and A at the end of the session. So. All right. So usually I come in about I'll I'll be listening in uh, actively listening at about five minutes before you're done, and it is already over the mark of when you should have started. So you just take your time, and uh, I know that our last speaker will be fine with you going your full 45 minutes. Great. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Take it take it away. All right. Thanks, guys, and thank thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Welcome to everybody who's joining us. Looks like we got a good group together. We'll go ahead and uh, jump right in to uh, all the fun stuff that we have to cover today.
All right. Well, today we're going to be uh, covering how making uh, that extra one degree difference in your trading and investing can help you spot uh, stocks that are outperforming the market. And so um, we're going to focus on a, a really cool strategy that I use myself in my trading and as well as in my hedge fund um, to spot these opportunities. So um, I'll give you a little bit of background on myself before we get into that. I am the Chief Investment Strategist of Altos Trading. I have over 22 years of experience trading the stock options and futures markets. And I received professional training at Morgan Stanley at their trade desk. And uh, we currently have over 50,000 members in over 100 countries across the globe that uh, follow and trade our strategies. And um, one of the, the strategies uh, that I'll be sharing with you today is one that uh, many of our members are using to do well in the markets and spot opportunities to outperform uh, the markets. And as uh, Sherry mentioned, I'm also a hedge fund manager. Uh, I manage money for my clients at Altos Capital, and I'm the founder and manager of some of the top performing options and stock alert services on the market today. So I'll read you guys a quick disclaimer before we get into the fun stuff. Uh, we all know that trading securities and options involves risk. Prior to buying or selling an option, an investor must receive a copy of characteristic characteristics and risks of standardized options. We will be talking a little bit about some option strategy today. Um, and of course, we need a broker to trade securities and options and must meet suitability requirements. Uh, we'll also be going over some uh, results of the strategy that I'll be teaching you. So just know that um, any past results that I share with you are not indicative of future performance. And due to the time critical nature of trading, brokerage fees, activity of other subscribers, et cetera, uh, we can't guarantee that that will be mirrored. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. By the end of our session today, and we'll spend about 45 minutes together, you'll discover how to gain the extra one degree trading edge that can put you ahead of some of the best traders and investors in the world. And whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, and we have members of, of all experience levels, um, all skill levels, um, this is really must have information for today's markets, especially as the markets uh, continue to exhibit uh, some fairly extreme volatility. We just had another, uh, a, another spike on the VIX uh, this week, um, and we're seeing a lot more of those than we, than we did in the past. So markets are a, a bit, uh, unstable, unusual, um, and market environments have certainly changed um, over the past uh, you know, several years, certainly since the corona crash. So I'm going to help you guys today navigate these types of market conditions. And we're going to do that with relative strength and the 212 degree difference. So as you saw in the video, at 211 degrees, water's hot, but it's still standing still and it's not really doing much. So it's kind of like a lot of stocks before they start to take off and go up. And as the temperature rises one degree, water starts to boil, which can create steam that powers a locomotive train. So it's amazing what that little extra degree of difference can do. Um, and this can be uh, also applied to the markets and I'll show you how. And it really can make all the difference. It's like when a stock starts to outperform a major benchmark index or sector and then skyrockets. And uh, traders and investors often wonder, you know, what causes a, a stock to begin to move up? Um, a, a, a large majority of the time uh, stocks are in ranges or they're flat or they're going down. Um, so it's critical that we have a tool and a strategy to uh, capture these opportunities when they when they present themselves. Um, and this is the difference we're going to look at today. So typically um, an indicator that would be used to, to gauge uh, the strength of a security uh, is the relative strength index or the RSI. Um, and this is an indicator that's been around a long time. It's widely used by retail traders uh, as well as professional traders and investors. And um, and it, it's it's uh, a good indicator in some ways, but it also has some weaknesses. And so we're going to talk about some of those um, on our session. So um, in terms of the traditional relative strength index or RSI, if you're not familiar with it or haven't used it or been exposed to it, um, it is a momentum indicator used in technical analysis. And what it does is it measures the magnitude of recent price changes to evaluate overbought or oversold conditions and the price of a security. Uh, and it, it is displayed as an oscillator on a chart. Um, it's typically plotted below your price chart of whatever security you may be looking at as a line graph. And it has two extremes, so it's a bounded indicator that has a minimum reading of zero and a maximum reading of 100. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's been around for quite some time. It was originally developed back in the 70s by J. Wells Wilder and introduced in his book, in 1978, New Concepts in Technical Trading Systems. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's 
a valuable indicator in some ways, but we're gonna also focus on some of the weaknesses um, of the RSI. And then I'll provide a solution for you guys to better gauge the relative strength of a security um, and ultimately help you um, spot these opportunities and improve your trading and investing. So when we look at the traditional interpretation of the relative strength index, um, it's, as I mentioned, a bounded indicator with a minimum and a maximum. So typically the, the traditional interpretation is a value of uh, 70 or above on the RSI indicates that the security is becoming overbought or oversold, and it may be primed for a trend reversal or pullback. Um, and an RSI reading of 30 or below would indicate an oversold or undervalued condition. Uh, so oftentimes people will wait for the RSI to drop uh, below 30 and then begin looking for uh, entry points in that security to go along the this, this security. But there are a couple problems, as I mentioned. So problem number one is a significant issue uh, with the RSI. And if you've used the RSI at any point in your trading and investing, you've uh, more than likely encountered this. But uh, stocks can remain overbought or oversold for extended periods of time. So when you get an oversold reading um, on the RSI, um, you may think, well, the stock's been oversold, it's due to turn around and go back up. But unfortunately, the majority of the time that doesn't occur. Um, the stock will often continue to go down. Um, so it, the traditional RSI doesn't really give us a good indicator of a shift in trend or momentum. Uh, and it's that old John Maynard Keynes saying, the markets can remain irrational longer than we can remain solvent. So we may think a stock is overbought or oversold, and it may very well be, but it can remain that way for as really as long as uh, it wants to, or as long as um, the market or sentiment is dictating that it is going to remain uh, above or below a certain price. Uh, and so that's a major problem that we encounter with a relative strength uh, index reading. Uh, and we'll look at an example of that right now on a chart of Tesla, TSLA. So looking at this chart, we noticed that on the left portion of the chart in August and uh, September, um, the RSI is starting to slope up, right? So um, it's following along with the price of the stock um, as uh, it, it goes from flat and begins to trend. Uh, and then we notice there in mid-October, the RSI uh, pops above 70 and begins to give us an overbought reading. So at this point in time, we, we would be, uh, if we were interpreting the RSI um, as an, an overbought, oversold indicator, it would be telling us that Tesla's overbought, this is not necessarily a good time to, to buy shares of the stock. And then if we fast forward into December and January, we see that it once again pops above 70 and spends a couple of months above the overbought uh, line and tells us that the, sh the shares of the stock are, are, are overvalued and overbought and are likely primed for um, a pullback or a reversal. But interestingly, if we look at the uh, price chart, it's telling us a different story, right? The stock is actually not uh, becoming overbought it is not pulling back and it's actually going up and it's going up significantly. So in this case, the RSI gave us misleading information. And this is unfortunately not uncommon uh, to encounter with the traditional relative strength indicator. Here's another example of Best Buy, BBY. Uh, you'll notice there in July that, um, and prior to that even, it was bumping up against the 70 line, but in July it was, it was uh, uh, well above 70, bumping up into the 90 level um, in the August, and all the while, the stock is going up in price. So while the RSI told us Best Buy was overbought and primed for a pullback, um, it actually continued to go up. Um, and it went up significantly from a low of around 67 a share to uh, over 120 a share. So it nearly doubled in price while the RSI told us that um, the, the stock was overbought. Here's another example. This is Amazon, AMZN. So you'll notice here that the RSI is giving us an overbought reading in June, July, um, spent most of this time period um, bumping up against 70 or above 70. All the while, Amazon is going up in price from around $2,400 a share to over $3,500 a share. So once again, um, the RSI gave us misleading information and did not uh, give us an accurate entry point to take advantage of this uptrend in the stock. All right, and we're gonna solve this problem. So the Again, the problem is uh, that even if a stock is overbought or oversold, um, it doesn't tell us how long that overbought or oversold 
condition is going to last. So it doesn't give us any real timing uh, component to, to structure a trade or an investment around. All right, and so we're gonna use a, a twist on the traditional RSI. This is uh, still relative strength, but using it in a much different and much more effective way. So looking at this chart of Amazon again, we see that the twist on the traditional RSI that I'll share with you uh, on our session today gave us much better, much more accurate information as the stock was going up in price, right? So um, it, it was telling us that the relative strength momentum was positive over the, the time period that the stock was actually going up. And then as it tops out and starts to move sideways in a range, the relative strength formula tells us that the stock is no longer outperforming relative to another security and it may not be the best time to go along the shares of stock and you can see here that that was actually the case the stock basically moved in a sideways channel for several months um, so you'll notice here that the accuracy and the timing and the information given to us by uh, this new twist on the relative strength indicator was much more accurate and effective. And I'm going to share with you exactly how to, to identify this. Now, there's a second problem with the RSI that is important to note before we get into the real solution. The relative strength indicator only measures the current strength of a stock relative to its past price. I'm going to say that again because it's important when we consider what we're actually looking at. And this should be really considered with any indicator, not just the relative strength in index. But the relative strength indicator only measures the current strength of a stock relative to its past price. So it's comparing itself to itself. And when we think about that on a deeper level, when a stock is moving up in price, naturally the relative strength is going to begin to move up at some point and give us an overbought reading because it's simply looking at the current price of the stock relative to its past price. So logically, that makes a lot of sense, but it's also a fundamental problem with the indicator. And it's a fundamental problem with virtually every indicator out there because virtually every indicator is comparing the current price of the stock to its past price. And we all know that past performance doesn't in, is not indicative or doesn't indicate future results. So why would we compare the current price of the stock to the past price of the stock? It doesn't make a lot of sense because it's in the past. It's, not, it's no longer relevant. So we want to use a different approach that can actually give us leading information versus the lagging um, inaccurate information that indicators like the relative strength give us. So here's the solution. Wouldn't it make more sense to identify a top performing index or sector and select a stock that is outperforming it. So rather than comparing the price of the stock, or in other words, the strength of the stock or whatever security you're trading, it doesn't have to be a stock, it could be an ETF or a futures contract, um, a Forex pair, it doesn't matter. Why would we compare it to its past price when we can compare it to a benchmark index or security sector industry that it's outperforming? And when I show you this and how to, how to accomplish it, it's going to blow you away and it's going to change the way you look at the markets and how you trade. Regardless of what strategy you're currently trading or indicator you're using, this will, this will, it'll be a moment of clarity. You'll, you'll see that, um, you know, why was I comparing, you know, the price of the security that I'm trading to itself all, all this time? It, it just doesn't make sense. So once we identify these opportunities, and I'll show you exactly how to do that, that extra one degree difference can take a losing system and give it the steam that can spot the next stock that is ready to explode. And this is one of the, the really uh, effective ways to identify these opportunities before they actually start to, to take off in price. And that one degree difference um, can help us spot these opportunities when a stock begins to outperform a major index, industry or sector because it often from that point goes on to make a big move up in price. And the key is to identify stocks that shift from underperforming to outperforming relative to a benchmark index or sector. And I'll show you how to do that. Once we identify these opportunities, they can be the golden ticket to beating the market because 
again, we're not comparing the stock to itself, we're comparing it to, um, let's say, an index. So if we know that an index like the S&P 500 is in a strong uptrend and is performing well, and by the way, you know, I, I believe the stat is something like fewer than 1% of professional money managers can beat the S&P 500 consistently over a long period of time, um, th this can help you identify these opportunities and actually beat a market that's that's performing well. So again, if we identify a, a strongly a strong performing market like the S and P 500, I'm going to show you how we can spot opportunities that are outperforming um, that benchmark index. And to use kind of a cliche saying from from Jen Cramer, there's there's always a bull market somewhere, right? So um, this often becomes the challenge for traders and investors um, as market conditions change. Um, you know, if you're using a bullish strategy and the market's in an uptrend and, you know, we've been in a bull market now for over a decade, um, you know, it, it can be, it can give you a false sense of security. It can be relatively easy to trade if you're simply, you know, buying dips or whatnot. Um, but eventually, you know, that, that changes and markets go into corrections. We go into, you know, longer term sustained bear markets. Um, and then uh, that becomes a situation where often, you, uh, traders and investors strategies that they were using that were working so well uh, begin to fail them and they they start to second guess and abandon the strategy um, and and that becomes a real problem so we need a way to find opportunities uh, within uh, different market conditions and this is where uh, relative strength uh, can be a real uh, valuable tool to add to your toolbox because even when we're in a market correction or bear market Relative strength can help us identify opportunities that outperform the broader markets. Um, and so uh, you really need to have a tool to and, and a strategy to find opportunities in any market condition. And this is where relative strength really shines. And even in the worst market conditions, um, as Jim Cramer uh, loves to say, you know, there's always stocks that are going up. Uh, and relative strength can help us spot those. And I'll show you how. So let's look at a comparison between the twist on the tr traditional RSI that I'm going to share with you on our session and the old antiquated, uh, you know, what, what I would call outdated and ineffective relative strength indicator uh, tells us. So this is going back to the chart of Tesla. Uh, this is a daily chart we're looking at. And you'll notice now we've got the old RSI indicator plotted along the new uh, RSI strategy that I'm going to teach you guys. Uh, and you'll notice there that in August and September, uh, Tesla was uh, relatively flat, uh, slightly moving up, but real, no real identifiable trend. Um, the RSI was uh, sloping up uh, into late, uh, mid, mid to late October until it peaked above 70 there in late October um, and was giving us an overbought reading. But that's actually when Tesla, the shares of Tesla began to take off and go up. So now something interesting happened here around the third week of September. Um, we notice that the, uh, the the new formula that I'll share with you gave us an indicator that Tesla was beginning to outperform the S&P 500 index. Now, at the time, the S&P 500 was in a strong uptrend and was performing very well. So wouldn't it make sense to look for opportunities um, if we want to uh, attempt to beat the market and find stocks that are, uh, you know, uh, poised to go way up in price to um, find something that's outperforming something that's already performing very strongly and this is what uh, this strategy accomplished and you'll see there in, in the third week of September it told us that Tesla was beginning to outperform the S&P now prior to that um, it was underperforming and you'll notice there that the um, the shares of the stock uh, basically were flat so um, you know we could have bought in there but we would have uh, experienced some oscillation and uh, you know flat price action and probably no real uh, results for a couple months until the stock started to take off. So when we look at the uh, twist on the traditional RSI, it gave us very accurate timing and it told us that the stock was poised for a move up. And of course, what happens shortly after this uh, indicator gave us the buy, the buy signal, the stock went up over 1,800% in the coming months. Now, again, look at the traditional RSI telling us that it was overbought. Um, that was inaccurate because the uh, the new RSI formula was 
moving up, right? You see the, the histogram was going up and it was telling us that the strength of the stock was actually picking up. It wasn't slowing down as the old RSI would have told us. Let's look at another example. This is Teradata, TDC, and we're getting rid of the, R, the old RSI now. We're, we're moving into the new improved relative strength formula. So if we look at October, November, December, we see that TDC is underperforming the S&P 500. Now, again, at the time, the S&P 500 was, uh, was moving up. It was in an uptrend. And why would we want to buy a stock that was underperforming the S&P 500 index? We might as well just go ahead and buy the SPY ETF, right? That would make a lot more sense. So buying TDC at this time would have made very little sense until late January. That's where the shift occurred. And we'll see that TDC began to outperform the S&P 500 index. And what happened, it went up 125% over the next week or two. So very, very quickly there, you see that move. Here's another example. This is actually uh, one that I traded in my hedge fund, Altos Capital. Um, and uh, we're, we are no longer hold shares of Futu Holdings. So uh, full disclosure, this was a, a, a real money trade in my hedge fund, but uh, no longer hold shares in Futu Holdings. But at the time, um, I used the relative strength formula to identify that Futu was beginning to outperform the S&P 500 index. And again, the S&P 500 was already performing very strongly. So once I spotted this opportunity, I went ahead and bought shares for my clients in Altos Capital. And you'll notice here that the relative strength momentum was really picking up in January into February uh, before topping out in mid to late February. And the stock went up 380% in only a couple of months. So I'm gonna show you and, and share with you my step-by-step -step process for how to uh, trade this relative strength system, how to identify these opportunities. And it's a simple four-step process um, that uh, I'll, I'll walk you through um, first by looking at each individual step and then we'll dig into um, how to actually uh, perform each, each step um, to spot these opportunities. So step one is to identify a top performing industry or sector, right? So that's our initial um, edge, you know, that one degree edge we're trying to gain by um, spotting uh, securities within a broader index or sector um, that's already performing strongly. And I'll show you how to identify these here in just a second. Step two is to then screen for stocks within that industry or sector. So once we've identified a top performing industry or sector, we then got to you know, roll up our sleeves and, and start to dig in and look for opportunities within that industry or sector. And then step three is to compare the relative strength of each stock to an index or ETF that tracks that industry or sector. And I'm going to give you the formula to do that here in a minute. Um, but that's the that's the uh, basically the step in the system where we're looking for uh, out, outperformance or stronger relative strength um, in the security we're looking at trading relative to step one, which is finding that benchmark uh, index industry or sector. And then finally, step four is to select a stock that changes from underperforming to overperforming. So this is the timing component of the system um, where we want to identify um, on a particular day or time of day, depending on what our time horizon is and what you know trading style we have, whether we're day trading or um, swing trading or we're long, you know, a longer term investor, um, we want to identify um, the timing piece of the puzzle when the security begins to outperform the benchmark index or sector. So that's the simple four-step system. And now I'll walk you through uh, the steps on how to do these. First, let's look at the formula. So the formula um, for relative strength that uh, is different than the old RSI indicator, which again compares itself to itself, right? It's comparing the current price of the stock to its past price, which doesn't give us really any good information. So let's look at how to compare the price of a security to another asset. So we have two data points. Data point one is the stock price. So that would be, and we're just talking about stocks here, but again, this can be applied to any security. Um, so that would be our data point one. So the price of the security that we're looking at uh, trading or investing in. And then data point two is what we're gonna compare that to. That's the reference price. Um, and that would be our, our benchmark, you know, um, index or sector uh, or industry. So uh, those would be 
uh, what we would use for a reference price. So those are our two data points. And in terms of the logic, uh, obviously we want the, the price of the security to be greater than zero. And that goes for the, the price of the security we're looking at trading as well as the security we're, that we're comparing it to. Um, and we're gonna take a log value. So the log is basically the stock price divided by the reference price. So data point one divided by data point two. And then we're gonna need to get the relative strength. And we use two inputs for that. We use an RS length of 90 days and an exponential moving average length of three periods. Okay, so that gives us our relative strength. We take the log value minus the log value length, the EMA length, and multiply it by 100. And if we get a positive value, that tells us that the, uh, the price of the security that we're looking at trading or investing in is outperforming the reference price or the data point two that we're comparing it to. So that's the formula. Now here's the secret to finding the top performing sector. So this is where we actually start out. This is step number one. Um, and we're gonna use a really cool uh, free tool that's available on the internet. We have no affiliation with finviz.com, but it is uh, a great resource that you can access uh, by going to their website. Um, you don't need to use any of their paid subscriptions or anything like that. Uh, what I'll show you here can be accessed for free on finviz.com. Um, and uh, this is not the live website. So what I'm showing you here is not uh, live, just so you know, um, don't take this uh, as you know live um, information or advice or anything like that. Um, but at the time, um, if we go to the groups tab, um, it's gonna give us that uh, some really in interesting information. It's gonna tell us the, and, we, and you can actually sort this um, by different metrics, industry, sector, et cetera. Um, but it's gonna give us, in this case, the, the uh, sector performance across different time frames. So we see that on a one week relative performance, um, we have a list of sectors that um, are either underperforming or outperforming. And then we have that information for a one month, three month and six month time period. So there's something very specific we wanna look for here. We wanna look for uh, a sector that is performing positively, number one, but also performing uh, very well um, on the positive scale and uh, posting a top three result across all four time periods. So if we look across these four time periods, we see that industrials is the top performer over the past week. Uh, and it's outperforming, this is compared to the S&P by the way, it's outperforming the S&P by nearly 4%. And then if we look at the one month relative performance, we see that industrials is once again, a strong performer outperforming by nearly four and a half percent. Looking down at the three month relative performance, we see that it's there at the number three spot and outperforming the broader market by nearly 12%. And then finally, if we look at the six month, we see it there once again at the number three spot, outperforming by nearly 30%. So over the past six months, um, industrials have been performing very strongly relative to the S&P, right? And so wouldn't it make sense to then begin looking for stocks to trade within the industrial sector? So you can see that 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 tremendous edge this simple step gives us. Um, without doing this, what if we decided, hey, let's go tra trade some uh, telecom stocks or technology stocks or consumer cyclicals? Well, unless we're shorting the stocks or you know, um, you know buying put options or something like that, uh, then yeah, that's not going to work out so well for you most likely. Um, so this is our initial edge and in step one in the system. So let's see how that looks on a chart. So we noticed there that over those uh, four time periods, the industrial sector was outperforming. All right, so then what we wanna do is, and this is step two, we wanna begin digging into um, the industrial sector stocks. So this is the, the where most of the legwork comes in on the system, um, is scanning through baskets of industrial stocks um, to look for stocks and then running the formula on those to see if they're outperforming the uh, industrial sector. Uh, and so if we do that, uh, we notice here that BLDR, Builder's first source, uh, while it was underperforming the industrial sector in June in the mid-July, around the third week of July, running the formula, it began to outperform the sector. And again, we, we noticed that the sector was performing very strongly across those four timeframes. And you can see the amazing timing it, it, it allowed us to uh, capture this shift in a sideways or downtrending 
stock before it started to take off and ended up actually going up 113% as the relative strength formula told us that it was outperforming the industrials. Here's another example. So this is a, a, a well-known company and well-known stock, Deer, D-E, uh, in the industrial sector that was first underperforming until around, around that same time, third week of July, began to outperform. And the stock went up 122% over the coming months. So those are a couple examples of how to uh, use the system um, and how to spot these opportunities. Uh, now, obviously, uh, there's a, a, a very crucial component to trading these if you're going to trade uh, relative strength opportunities, and that's locking in profits. Um, that's a key component to any system or strategy. So let's talk about how to do that once we identify uh, one of these opportunities. We're going to use a two target approach. So target number one is to set a 5 to 10% initial profit target on the first half of the position. Um, so a, a, a large uh, percentage of these opportunities go on to make relatively quick 5 to 10% moves. Um, but as I showed you in a lot of the examples, um, a lot of them can go up uh, much, much more, sometimes hundreds or even thousands of percent. So we want to set a profit target number two to take advantage of those opportunities. And that's a 10% trailing stop on the second half of the position to capture the bigger gains when they present themselves. So let's say we, you know, we're trading 500 shares of one of these opportunities. At a five to 10 percent move, we would want to look at closing 250 of those shares, and we could even move our stop to break even on the remaining shares and set a 10 percent trailing stop. And that way, if the stock does continue to go up to make a big move, uh, we can uh, capture that um, a lot of that move up in the share price. So that's the two-step approach for locking in profits in the system. Um, we can also use a system to trade options. Um, so there, I'm sure are a lot of options traders on the session with us today, um, and I love to use the system around options, and it can really be ideal for timing directional option strategies, whether you're buying calls, selling puts, vertical call spreads, bull put credit spreads, calendar spreads, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of strategies that we can use this for, but the key is that um, it can help us time the relative strength of the security that we're looking at trading the options on. And as I mentioned, a lot of these go on to make a big moves and many of them uh, very quick five to 10% moves. And that can help us leverage these opportunities because a 5% move up in a stock can uh, often equal 100% options gain if you're buying, let's say, directional calls. Um, so this can really be uh, a great opportunity. Um, and we're gonna take a look at an example. This is Apollo APO. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, in mid-April, it it was uh, beginning to outperform the S&P 500. So prior to that, it was underperforming. You can see the shares were basically moving sideways and then the stock started to take off, right? Um, so let's look at how we could play that with a call option. So on April 16th, when the stock began to outperform, um, it was already, the, the S&P was already in a strong uptrend. So we knew that we were gaining that extra edge, that one degree difference um, as Apollo began to, to outperform on a very specific day, April 16th, 2019. And that day, the stock closed at 29.66 a share. So if we were to go out a few months, and I typically like to give these, you know, two to three months to play out. So um, going out in expiration to the September uh, 30 strike calls, those at the time were trading for $1.70 per contract. So and for purposes of our example, we'll look at buying 10 contracts at the 170 uh, price. So that would cost us about $1,700 before any broker commissions or fees. Um, and uh, from there, let's see what happened. So um, we saw on the, on the stock chart that Apollo began to go up shortly after the relative strength formula identified that it was outperforming the S&P. And only six days later, it was trading up 5%. And that resulted in nearly 100% move in the option. So if we fast forward six days, we see that these contracts uh, would have shown a profit of $1,650. Uh, and we can apply the two-step target profit approach to the option strategy as well. So rather than close all 10, which that still would have been you know, a great profit if we had taken this trade um, and gotten out with all of our uh, 10 contracts, uh, we can scale out and, and give ourselves the opportunity to make additional profits on any further move up in the stock. So rather than close all 10 contracts, let's say we closed half and kept half open. So we keep five open until the September 20th expiration. And again, going back to the chart, we saw that Apollo continued to move up. So the relative strength formula worked very nicely on, 
uh, in this scenario. Uh, and then we look at the expiration date with the five remaining contracts, picked up an additional $4,225. So by scaling out um, on this one opportunity, a $1,700 investment would have turned into over 5,000. That's a 297% ROI. Um, and the stock itself did very well, even if you had traded shares of the stock directly. But this is an example of how you can use options to uh, trade these types of opportunities. So now you guys know when a stock gains that extra one degree and begins to outperform a top performing index or sector, it starts to boil and often results in explosive moves to the upside. And I reveal to you my four step process for identifying these opportunities. So I, I gave you each step um, uh, in the system and how to uh, find these, these opportunities with that four step process. But it does take a lot of time and work to sift through over 5,000 stocks every week to find the very best. And that's what uh, we wanna offer for you today on our session is for our team to do all the legwork for you and do the heavy lifting um, and send you these opportunities right to your inbox or smartphone every week. And we send about five to 10 uh, of these opportunities out uh, per week. It depends on market conditions. Um, 10 would be on the very high side if market conditions dictate, uh, but typically you know, you'll know, you get three, four, five per week. Um, so somewhere around 10 to 20 per month. So plenty of opportunities um, in, in any market condition. It doesn't matter if we're in a bear market or a sideways market or a bull market. Um, and so uh, we wanna offer you the opportunity to send these to you. And you can even take any indicator or system you're currently using and apply it to our top performing relative strength stocks. So a lot of our members um, already have uh, a system they're they're using, or maybe they're using one of our uh, option strategies that we've taught them, or um, et cetera, um, and they'll take these uh, picks and use them as opportunities uh, to trade those strategies. So we're bundling this all into a special alert service uh, strength pick package that's exclusive to um, the, the event today. And you'll get access to our best trades sent right to your inbox. So the nice thing is you don't have to sit and watch your computer all day, right? So you don't have to spend the hours of legwork to find the opportunities, uh, we'll send those right to you. Now, if you want to, that's perfectly fine. Um, and some of our members do like to do the legwork and, and uh, find these opportunities and then also supplement them with the ones that we send. Um, and we do send them all out after market hours. So you don't, again, have to be at your computer during the trading day. Um, we spot these opportunities the very day that they begin to outperform a benchmark index or sector, and we send them to you that evening. Um, and we also send it out via priority text message if you prefer to receive your alerts via text. Um, and they come with easy to read instructions, including the profit target levels. And again, you get about 15 to 20 per, per month on average. And, and here's what you receive in the alert. You get the ticker symbol for each stock, you get the company name, you get the price of the stock, uh, at the time that it's beginning to outperform, you get profit target number one, you get profit target number two, and you get our analysis of why the stock is expected to outperform. So we give you the benchmark index we're looking at that's, uh, that we're comparing it to and everything you need to know to, to take advantage of these picks. Um, and we launched this uh, just re uh, not too long ago. Um, we've sent out uh, about, I think, 35 uh, recommendations, slightly more, um, uh, including the ones that went out um, late last week, uh, but out of the 35 we had sent through late last uh, week, 34 or 97% of those stocks have gone up from the recommended entry price. Uh, XPEV went up 8% in one day. They all went up 11% in four days. DocuSign went up 12% in only one day. Uh, US Steel went up 16% in only one day. TECL went up 25% and only 12 days, SGH went up 31% in only five days. So these are all less than two weeks, and um, many of these could go on to make uh, you know 100%, even 1,000% moves. But you can see the types of moves that this system was able to spot, and these are not hypothetical examples. These are actual examples we sent out to our relative strength members. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of great opportunities within these picks. So here's everything that we're gonna uh, include in the package today. Uh, for you guys. You get 12 months of the relative strength signal service. Uh, normally that retails for $1,499 a year. Um, you get priority text alerts to your phone. Um, if you prefer to receive those, we'll set you up at no additional charge. Normally that's $299 service. Um, we're also going to give you access to our uh, invitation only Facebook group. We have over 800 members uh, in the group that trade our strategies that you can interact with and bounce ideas uh, off of and everything. And we're going to give you access to that uh, invitation only Facebook group 
valued at uh, 199. We're also going to throw in our uh, options course, learn to trade, uh, how to trade different option strategies that includes trade adjustments to help fix losing trades. That's valued at $900 retail. Uh, and again, we deliver everything after market hours, so you don't have to day trade. And you get 15 to 20 picks per month. Um, and ultimately, we're going to help you learn to trade stocks and options with consistency. And by the way, many of the picks, um, most of them actually do have options that trade on them. Uh, and then we're going to throw in two bonuses. Bonus one is our professional trading series online course, valued at $595. It's over nine hours of our best strategies, uh, trade adjustments, options, Forex, futures, stocks. Um, I taught you one of our strategies. We have many more um, than the one I taught you guys today that we'll share with you um, as a special bonus, as well as our How to Create Risk-Free Trades ebook. And this is a great strategy um, that we've presented in our ebook that complements the relative strength service. So um, this can help you mitigate or even eliminate the risk in a lot of your trades. So there's a lot of value we built into this package. The retail price on all of these things is over $3,500. We are gonna take 84% off the price and offer this up today only at $49 a month. Uh, no, no contracts, no commitment. Um, if you decide at one point it's not, doesn't fit your style, uh, you, you can cancel. You're not locked in anything. But as long as you remain a member, you'll never pay the full retail price. So you're grandfathered in at the low price of only 49 a month. If you guys wanna take advantage, you can go to altostrading.com forward slash RS49 and we'll begin sending you all of our relative strength picks beginning this week. Um, you'll probably get, get your first alert either tonight or tomorrow evening. Um, we haven't sent one out yet uh, this week. Um, so again, that's in the chat box, um, altostrading.com forward slash RS49. All right, so um, I, I kind of am out of time here uh, and I wanna leave at least a couple of minutes for Q&A. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it there um, and pass it back over to see if there are any questions that have come through. Oh, yes, you've got a ton. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, boy. That's great, though. Um, so if we don't get to all of your questions, where should they email you and or should they just get in on your um, offer there? Yeah, so um, let me uh, kind of fast forward to our um, contact page. But we are throwing in a, a 90 day guarantee as well, by the way. Um, so if you guys don't make at least your membership fee back in the first 90 days, we do give you an extra year of this of the signals at no additional cost. Oh. Um, and again, no contracts there. So we're really confident in the service and um, we have a lot of great success stories and want you guys to be one of those. So we're here to help you out and make sure you succeed. So if you uh, you know have any bumps in the road or aren't successful in the first 90 days, we'll throw in an extra year at no cost. Uh, but here's our contact information. It's support at altostrading.com. You can email us if I don't get to all the questions. Um, you can also give us a call and one of our representatives would be happy to talk to you and answer any questions you have at 800-895-9348. I put both of those in the chat for you. Thanks okay, so, so uh, let me just come down here and see. I'm gonna come as close to when you started. Um, let's see. Everybody's asking if it's recorded. Yes, it is. Um, it's going to be um, posted at our tradersexclusive.com forward slash archived underscore webinars. We've shown that a couple of times, but I know everybody's coming in and out. Um, uh, are Yeah, are these being recorded? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I'm not going to talk about a couple of these things, but uh, why do you use a log value? Um, so that's basically to give us the, it allows us to gauge whether um, the data point one, which is our, our uh, securities price, is greater or, or um, overperforming data point two um, as it relates to um, the, the relative strength length, the RS length of three. So yeah, in order to get a positive or negative value, you need to take a log value of the of those two data points. All right, and um, one person would like to know if we could see the formula slide once again. Uh, sure, let me see if I can get back to that. Really take quick. a quick screenshot of that. There it is. There you go. 
That's the formula. That's the formula. Formula slide again. Okay, I think that um, GoToWebinar has an ability to take a screenshot if you need to save that. Um, another person wanted to know, how do you put the new relative strength indicator on your chart in Thinkorswim? I think maybe that's something they could call somebody about though, eh? Um, yeah, that would be, you, you would uh, need to program this into, a, into an indicator. Um, and, you know, that's something that, that, uh, that we can talk to, you know, members about. Um, but, uh, the, yeah, we don't, we don't offer any sort of indicators in our package. Um, this is purely, uh, you know, a, a subscription uh, pick service. So. so maybe Thinkorswim could help them put new relative strength indicators into their charts. Yeah, they would need to contact their, their broker, um, whether it's Thinkorswim or whoever they trade with. Okay. Okay, so now this is getting into your offer, and um, John wants to know: Do we get option alerts? Um, good question. So we don't we don't provide uh, instructions around options trades. We we give you the the picks, and in the alert, it will say uh, whether the it will indicate whether the pick is optionable or not. So again, most of them are um, probably ninety percent of the picks we do, or or even greater, are optionable. Um, but because there are so many different strategies you could trade around these picks, you know, uh, vertical sp debit spreads, credit spreads, you could sell puts on them, you could buy calls, you could lots of different you know strategies. We don't we don't uh, give direction around the strategy. That would kind of be up to you. Um, a lot of our members will just simply buy a call, a directional call um, option, but we don't provide um, but the the actual pick. But we can give you some guidelines. Um, you know, if you have a strategy you're considering trading around the pick. Um, we're happy to talk to you about that, um, you know, uh, in, in terms of picking like a strike price and expiration. So generally, like if you're buying a directional call on one of these picks, uh, we suggest going with an at the money or slightly in the money strike price with a two to three month expiration. But we can discuss that with you on a one-off basis if somebody's, um, yeah. you know, intending to just trade options on these picks. Yeah, I think that toll-free number is um, gonna be the key to the universe, the 800-895-9348. Yep. Jeff, thank you so much for being with us today. Folks, if you had questions that didn't get answered, get on the phone, get on the email. I know that they'll be able to take care of this for you. And um, and I, I definitely would love to have you back again in the future, sir. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here and I'd be happy to come back anytime. Thanks so much for having me. All right, you have a great day. I know that we've got our fourth speaker in the wings. And I'm just going to switch us around a little bit. Let's see, going to make me the presenter. And we're going to bring up our fourth trader, Dan Passarelli of Market Taker Mentoring. And um, he's going to be talking to us about how earnings tradings can be your most profitable trade. And um, I just want to give him a little bit of an introduction. Uh, some people here might already know Dan, but uh, we know that as a trader, it's your mission to empower yourselves with the knowledge you need to invest successfully. That's why we've invited our next speaker here today. He's a trader, an author, and a world-renowned trading expert. He's a former member of the Chicago Board Options Exchange and Chicago Mercantile Exchange. He's a frequent contributor to Bloomberg Business Television, Fox Business News, CBOE TV, and a resource to journalists. He's an invited speaker and educating traders for organizations um, such as NASDAQ, CBOE, the International Securities Exchange, CME Group, Fidelity Investments, TradeStation, TheStreet.com, and the Shanghai Futures Exchange, and that's just to name a few. He's also a marathon runner, a musician, and a world traveler, and I'd like for you to make him feel really welcome. Welcome to the stage, Dan Passarelli. <laughs> oh, hey. let's, let's make you the panelist, I mean the uh, presenter, and I'm going to give you the questions so you can see them. And... Uh, how do you like to do it, Dan? Do you like folks to hold their questions or you want them to just fire them off as they think of them? Sounds good to me. All right. Take it away, sir. Glad to have you. Yeah, glad to be here, Sherry. Thanks. 
All right, uh, today we're talking about how earnings trading can be your most profitable trade. Each of us has the power within us to make trading a source of continuous wealth. And today I'm gonna share with you how to unlock that power. This is my promise to you. I'm gonna share with you how you can replace uncertainty with confidence. So you can profit consistently no matter what the stock market is doing using this simple data-driven real money proven earnings trading system that hundreds of our students have used to go from that demoralized feeling we've all felt at some time to that feeling of satisfaction and self-assurance that we all know is possible and that that's powerful this can literally transform your life because when you're confident, you trade better, and when you trade better, you're more confident. It's a positive circle that's easier to experience than you think. This technique I'm gonna share with you makes it possible. It uses my proprietary earnings trading system. And at the end of this presentation, I'll share how you can take the next step so you can start getting immediate results. Is that a fair deal? Yes, what do you say? Are you liking this? And don't be afraid to participate here. Let's make this fun. Is that a fair deal? Give me a yes, yes, yes. If that is a great deal for you. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I got a uh, yes from Jules. I got, a, uh, I got a lot of these old questions here as well here. Oh my goodness, I gotta delete all some of these. Uh, yes from Michael, and yes from John, and yes from Thomas, and yes from Alex, yes from MY, from Larry, and a whole bunch of other ones. Okay, in order for you to get the most out of this, I ask that throughout this presentation and afterwards, make this about you. Consider turning off your cell phone, closing Facebook, all your other open tabs, if you have a busy household, maybe shut the door of the room you're in, and let yourself get immersed in what I'm about to share. This is the last presentation of the day here. Let this become part of you, like let it in. And be sure to stay till the end of this presentation too. The most important things I'll share come later and to keep the focus, I'm gonna hold all questions. If you have a question, write it down, I'll get to them all later. So that said, Let's keep it positive and let's have some fun, all right? So Sherry gave me a kind introduction. This is a pictorial representation of who I am, what I do, and some of the organizations I've worked with. I traded for years down on the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange. I wrote two of the most popular books on option trading. I've worked with every major options broker in the US and abroad, as well as pretty much all the options exchanges in the world as well. And I get to be on TV a lot. And I guess if you spend enough time in an in industry, and it's 28 years for me in option trading, you get to do some pretty cool things. But enough about me, let's talk about you. I know some of you have traded earnings in the past, and I know some of you have not. Here's the thing. If you have traded earnings, I can help you do it better and be more profitable with less risk. If you've not traded earnings in the past, then you're in the right place at the right time because I am the foremost expert on trading earnings. And now look, those of you who know me, you know that I'm not cocky or arrogant or anything at all like that. So, you know, I'm definitely not saying that because of the ego or anything. I'm saying it because of my experience. And that alone is why you should follow other successful people in this business because their experience proves they know when and how to take money from the market. I'm here today to share with you exactly what I look for in my process before I make an earnings trade and how simple it can be. And I am not shy about saying this. Now look, I'm also not saying trading is easy by any means, but I have my strategy down to a simple three minute scan that will blow your mind. I've taken the decision process of whether a trade is worthy of your time, money, and energy, all the way down to as little as the amount of time you should spend brushing your teeth. And today, I am gonna share that process with you. Oh, okay, uh, look, you're gonna love this, uh, you're gonna love this story. Do you, mind it, do you mind if I share a short story with you? Give me a yes if it's okay if I share 
a short story with you. Just go down to the questions box. Let me know. Give me, give me your permission. MY says yes. Al says yes. Phillips says yes. Michael says yes. Thomas says yes. Okay, good, good, good. Samuel says yes. Great. So there I am with my little sister. This is probably 1979 or something. And a lot of kids think they want to be a doctor, fireman, teacher, whatever. For me, I wanted to be a trader, even at that age. And I, I know that's a little weird, right? But but I did. You know, I saw traders on TV and the movies. Growing up in Chicago, there were a lot of them on the train, local news. Uh, I'd see them in their jackets in the financial district. And these successful traders were all around me in Chicago. And it excited me to think that they could make money and, and good money doing nothing but trading. So right out of college, I took a stack of my resumes and I went job shopping. I literally knocked on every door of the Chicago Board of Trade building, handing out those resumes. And lo and behold, guess what? I got a job. And that's where I cut my teeth. I worked my way up from runner, which was a totally entry level position, to becoming one of the biggest traders in my pit. And I actually started trading in 1998 and life was good. I was living the dream. I mean, at that point, it might have been the best time in 30 years to be where I was. And in a lot of ways, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Trading was easy. You could make some mistakes and still make money. Because do you remember what was going on in 1998, the late 90s? You remember uh, what was going on back then? It was there was some phenomenon in the markets and in the you know world and out west. It was called the internet, the internet bubble is what it was called. Exactly, Michael. Yeah, Phillips is com. Exactly. It was called the internet bubble. Type a yes if you traded during the internet bubble. A lot of, I knew a lot of people I know made a lot of money back then. And th this is a poll. I'd like everybody to answer this one, please. So please go down to the questions box and uh, let me know, yes or no, if you traded uh, during the internet uh, bubble, you know, <laughs> Samuel says no, and Glenn says yes, and Larry says yes, and Michael says yes, and MY says no, Charlotte says yes, Pox says yes, SP says no, and and uh, uh, Philip says his wife refused. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. Look, uh, Philip and, and some of the other people who said, you know, just said no. I'll tell you what. Look, it was a good time to trade. Uh, and 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 if you didn't trade back then, that's okay, because I'm going to share with you an opportunity so you can take advantage of of this opportunity right now that can make you the same sort of gains, and it's just as easy to trade, if not easier. Now, speaking of that old internet bubble, you know what happened, right? In fact, you know what eventually happens to all bubbles, don't you? That's right, they all pop. And, and for most, when the internet bubble burst, it didn't really look like this, like this cute little girl, you know, oh, she blows the bubble and oh, look, and she's gonna touch it and it's gonna pop and it's gonna giggle and run around the room and giggle more, you know, it didn't really look like that. It was something a little bit more like this. This is basically what happened to a lot of people. And I don't really talk about this a lot, but it's kind of what happened for me. I'd never seen a crash like that in my career at that point. And back then, I didn't know how to handle it. In some ways, I, I did better than some, but it was bad. All of a sudden, nothing worked as it had worked before. Trades I'd normally crush weren't making money. And I started to lose my confidence. I was constantly second guessing myself. I'll never forget this one time where I just got completely run over by a trade. I lost half a million dollars in a single day. That night, I had to go home and have a conversation with my wife, Kathleen. 
The plan was to put my next bonus away for our kids' college funds before this happened. And that bonus was now gone. The kids' college funds were now gone. And I wondered if I'd still have a job. I wondered if I'd be able to keep my house. Now everything was different. And that's when I knew that I had to create a trading system that works in all market scenarios. And as fate would have it, at that moment, I was presented with an opportunity. And it's funny how opportunities seem to come right at the right time, isn't it? And when you get an opportunity, by the way, what do you do? Hmm? What do you do when someone says, one, two, three, boom, here's a great opportunity? You take that step, right? Look, there are two types of people in this world. There are those who second guess everything. Those are the people who are always looking back, not forwards, who hesitate. And then there are people who take action and create success. Now, from the outside, it seems like these people are always getting lucky. But that's not it, is it? They take action. Uh, type a yes. Here's another uh, poll here. I want everybody to answer this. I want you to go to the questions box right now. Type a yes if you are the sort of person who looks forward and takes action. Type a yes or just the letter Y if you are the sort of person who looks forward and, and actually takes action. I want to see who we're dealing with over here. Dwight says yes, and Larry says yes, Philip says yes, MY says yes, Michael says yes, Thomas says yes, John says no, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, look, John and, and, and maybe other people who might have considered saying no or whatever, uh, look, the most successful traders that I know, and look, I know hundreds of traders, right? The most successful traders that I know, they all have the same trait. They take action. Trading is about having an investor's mindset. It's about investing in yourself so you can make a profit. You can't make a profit if you never make the investment, right? So like many opportunities can, this opportunity that I was presented with, it changed my life. It set me down the path that I'm on today. The exchange asked me to come and teach classes for them. And I found that that was my calling. At that time, I started trading in a regular non-professional trading account, you know, just like you. I was learning a different way to trade than I was used to. And I discovered that there were strategies that I wasn't using on the trading floor, or at least not trading them the same way that were very powerful, that could make money in all market conditions, up or down, even the most unpredictable of markets. I made it my life's work to give back to the trading community and share these strategies with all traders and, and empower you however I can. That's what led me to creating this earnings trading system that I use and all our top performing traders use. Let's go back to the simpler days, okay? So this is pre-COVID crash, right? Goldman Sachs was up 23% over this 12-month period. Question, would you be happy with a 23% return in a year? Now, this is not a rhetorical question. I want, this is another poll. Go down to the questions box and tell me, would you be happy with a 23% return in a year, would you? Again, not a rhetorical question. I wanna know, would you be happy with 23% annual return? Charlie says yes. Al says yes. Michael says yes. Philip says no way. Samuel says no. James says yes. Wow, this is pretty interesting here, huh? And look, I think some of the folks who said no have an interesting perspective. And I like it. 23% a year is tough for some people. But what if I told you there's a strategy that it doesn't matter if the market goes up or down, is volatile or calm, and you can still make money consistently and potentially really good money. 
Well, here's the big news. Traders can do better than results like these in all markets, and you have to. So interest rates are near zero. That's bad for banks. Um, we've got inflation worries and such. That's bad for money managers. But do you know what saved firms like Goldman Sachs lately? They're trading units. Here, look. Goldman has 36,600 employees. The average salary is $367,564. And that includes the interns that go and get dry cleaning and coffee, right? To and, and that doesn't include bonuses. So that's a total of $13.5 billion being paid out in salary before bonuses. And traders trade for the bonuses. That's where the real money is. And before overhead. In order for Goldman Sachs to pay out $13.5 billion in salary, then bonuses and all the overhead, and still retain enough money so that their stock goes up 23%, Goldman must make hundreds of percent each year. These are the kind of trades professional traders make. And that's why they make three or 400 grand a year before those gigantic bonuses. When I started on the trading floor, I started with a $30,000 account. Making trades like this daily, weekly, and monthly enabled me to turn that $30,000 well into the seven-figure area. That's more than 23% a year. This is what's possible. This is what traders are doing every day. And it's not just professional traders. This is Vic. He was one of our traders who traded our earnings trading system. Vic says, I have only been trading for about a year, but 2020 was one of the most difficult years, if not the most difficult year to trade, especially for a newbie like me. In spite of all the challenges, huge market up and down swings throughout the year and all the crazy stuff happening, I actually did pretty well, increasing my account value by over 30% between June 20th when I went live and the end of the year. And so that comes out to about a 60% annualized return. And look, he was brand new to option trading. Imagine what you can do with a little experience. There are several advantages to trading earnings. First, they're market independent. I can tell you that no one can pick direction on earnings. No one can. I'm going to tell you more about that later. So my strategy, which uses options, is direction neutral. It, it doesn't matter if it goes up or down. And this strategy is very short term on each trade. In fact, it's less than a 24-hour trade. It is the shortest trade that we make here at Market Taker Mentoring that limits broad market exposure. There's potentially greatly leveraged profits. And there's an extremely simple yes-no test to screen trades. And the opportunities. You know, there's earnings that are released year round, but they're very concentrated in a short period of time. Now, the biggest week of opportunities is next week, starting July 26th. Remember that day, July 26th. In fact, write that down. Write down July 26th, and then in all caps right next to it, write BE READY and underline it. The week of July 26th, there are literally hundreds of earnings trading opportunities. I like to call that money week because there are so many opportunities. And look, opportunities are the lifeblood of trading. It's, it's, it's having an investor's mentality, right? We are at the beginning of a life-changing time to trade. So when's the best time to be prepared, right? If money week is just one week, not even one week away, you want to be ready for it, right? When you want to start next month, right? You want to start getting prepared, maybe Sunday night? No. That's right. Michael says right now. Exactly. Yeah. Ted says right now. So look, like, look, when you have an opportunity, somebody says one, two, three, boom, do it. You do it now, right? And the most important thing about earnings trades is simply that they work. It wasn't until I was a trader, like most of the traders attending this webinar, trading in a regular non-professional account, that I discovered the power of time spreads. 
Now look, ironically, after trading thousands of time spreads on the trading floor and honing my skills with them, mostly in the form of risk management and execution, I learned the last 10% nuance that pushed the power of time spreads over the top for me in, well, you know, let's just say a rather unique way. So look, long story short, uh, I found myself on the phone with a producer from Bloomberg Television. And, you know, this is about six years ago, right? And I'd never done anything like that before. It was just kind of weird serendipitous that I was even having this conversation. And, I, you know, I'll admit, like, I was kind of excited. I was like, oh, man, this is cool. I'm going to be on, on global television in front of hundreds of millions of people. This is great. Okay, cool. Let's do it. And so uh, I, I asked the producer, well, okay, what do you want to talk about? He's like, Dan, I want you to go stand in the pit. And Apple has earnings coming out after the close. I want you to give us a way to trade Apple going into earnings. And then it was just like somebody let the air out of the balloon, like, right? Somebody let the air out of the balloon because, like I mentioned before, I didn't believe that anybody could pick direction on earnings. I still don't believe that. But another thing that I bet you you never knew is that professional traders are are typically not allowed to trade earnings. Isn't that weird? It's kind of surprising, right? A lot of people are surprised when I tell them that. So look, like long story short, I had like a long career. And at this point, like at one point in my career, you know, I ended up being one of the top five traders, top five money-making traders at my company, right? Um, I was allowed to trade whatever I wanted, as big as I wanted, you know, Dan, just keep doing what you're doing, right? except I was never allowed to trade earnings. I was never allowed to have a position going into earnings because that's the most unpredictable day of the, of the month or of the quarter rather. And so like those of you who know me, you know that I always put my money where my mouth is. And if I'm gonna have a trade, or if I'm gonna talk about a trade on global television in front of hundreds of millions of people, it's gonna be a trade that I like that I have on, right? So I told the guy, I go, hey, look, I'll be right back. And I ran over to my trading station and I, you know, I looked at it and I was like, well, um, yeah, so, uh, okay, uh, I can't buy calls or puts because, you know, I know I can't pick direction. Can't sell puts because I know I can't pick direction or credit spreads or, you know, straddles tend to be overpriced. More on that in a minute. And I was like, I don't know, like, what am I, what can I do? And so then I was like, you know what? Let's look at a time spread. And then I was, I was like, hold on a second. This actually works. And I immediately put the trade on and I called the guy back. I went down the floor, did the interview. The trade worked like a charm and I was hooked after that. And then later I came across some data that you'll hear about in a minute that then gave me the black and white proof that this was no fluke. When the right criteria are met, this is a genuine consistency trade that can be used over and over again to crank out consistent profits with confidence during specific periods of the year, in particular earnings season. Uh, so I know I've got some option traders here. I'm going to give uh, everybody else a 30 second quick crash course. A time spread is when I buy one option and I, at the same time, as part of a spread called a time spread, I sell another option with less time until expiration. Both are calls or both are puts, and they both have the same strike price. Now, the data show that with earnings, these usually work out great, as you'll see on the next slide, when certain criteria are met. And that is really important. I'm definitely not saying just go and trade a time spread on every single earnings play. That would be a disaster. It would not work. But when certain criteria are met, these work great. Now, the other times when other criteria are met, we use straddles or sometimes some other uh, strategies. But straddles are often weak when it comes to earnings because of the implied volatility buildup going into earnings. But when we do our yes-no test, we'll show that there are times less than 5% when straddles or something else works. But mostly, we're going to stick to time spreads. Let's look at why. 
there's a lot of data here. Don't get too hung up on trying to read all the numbers. Later, I'll explain how to simplify all of this. For now, here's what's important. Look here. Here's what this slide shows. If you sell short-term options the day before an earnings event, they lose value greatly once earnings are announced, the next trading session, which is good. Now, longer term options also lose their value between putting them on the day before earnings and then taking them off after the announcement. But the key element of this observation is that the short term options lose way more value than the longer term ones. So what that means and what this essentially proves is that when certain criteria are met, trading time spreads around an earnings event is effectively a long run consistent winning strategy and you can see the results here. So uh, I use several different tools for this but let me give you the breakdown on how this works. These are basically the steps to follow this system through earnings season. There are a few details involved. But this is basically the gist of it. So I want you to write this down, okay? First, we find all stocks that have options listed on them and, and, and also have earnings coming out after the close today or before the open tomorrow morning. Are you with me? Yes? That's important. We can, uh, we can find several trades a day. Sometimes there are hundreds of opportunities. For example, the week of July 26th. That week, there are literally hundreds. Again, that is an extremely important week, money week. We screen these trades using the yes, no screen technique to see if we should continue on with a potential trade. This is your first step and will literally save you hours and hours of your precious time and make your life so much better. Not to mention, It'll ensure you're only trading the best trades, the ones with edge, meaning they have a statistical advantage in your favor. So your win rate increases and your winners are bigger. You like this? Yes? Hey, give me some feedback. Give me a yes if you're liking this. If you're loving this, go down in the questions box, please. Right now, give me a yes if you are all over this. You're loving it. MY says yes. Michael says yes. Thomas says, absolutely, with all caps and three exclamation points. I love that enthusiasm, man. Come on, everybody. Philip says, yes. Charlotte says, yes. All right, all right. So look, we continue on with the trades that have a positive term structure of volatility. And the greater the disparity in the term structure, the better. This step is critical. This is what I did on the trading floor every day and then put it into our earnings trading system to make this simple for anyone to follow. Next, we run the is was check by modeling the spread on tomorrow's days with a variant file crush on both the short term and the long term option based on a partial reversion to the mean, but also relative to realized volatility and compare that to the past to get the modeled and durable gap, okay? The modeled and durable gap is just my way of making this completely foolproof and black and white. So it's super easy for you. Once you have that, you'll know exactly which trades to put on and which to stay away from. Now, here is where most people go wrong. We put on the time spread, the session immediately before earnings. This is less than a 24 hour trade and that is critical. We follow the MTM proprietary earnings trade technique that I just shared and exit the trade at the precise time the following day. Everyone screws that part up, but I'll share with you how you can get the timing right later. And look, then it's just rinse, wash, repeat. So I wanna go through a few examples. This is a trade you could have done in McDonald's in a past earnings season. You, uh, the session before earnings, uh, you could have gone through the checklist, right? Could have gone through the checklist, went through the whole thing, and it would have identified this trade. You could have sold to open 10 of the McDonald's four day to expiration, 165 calls at $1.75. And at the same time bought to open, 
10 of the McDonald's 11 day to expiration, 165 calls at $2.11. So I paid 211, collected 175, all as part of one trade. That's a net of paying 36 cents for the time spread. Okay, everybody following me? So then the market closes, earnings comes out. The next morning after the market opens, we wait for three things to happen. And we just, check, you know, we just look at our checklist. Like it's very, very simple. There's three things that need to happen. And then once they do, we can take the trade off. And in order to do that, we simply sell the one we bought and, and buy the one we were short. So we just buy to close 10 of the McDonald's three day to expiration, right? Cause yesterday they're four day, now they're three days. 165 calls at $1.29, and then sold to close the ones we bought yesterday, 10 of the McDonald's 10 day to expiration. Yesterday they're 11, now they're 10. 165 calls at $1.81, and we could have collected 52 cents. So the trade made 16 cents on a 36 cent trade, which is 44%. Let's make this more tangible. If you bought a 10 lot, you'd have invested $360 and made $160. Factor in commissions, of course, and like this is a solid trade. Now notice, and this is important, I wanted to make this as black and white as possible for presentation purposes. But in reality, because the bid ask spreads were so wide, particularly on closing the trade, which is almost always the case, if I'd have used our technique of middling the market, profit would likely have been a bare minimum of 20 cents better, which is $200 more on the 10 lot, or more like a 100% return in this case. But look, again, I just wanted to show this example in a pure, unarguable way. In reality, managing the bid ask spread on closing the trade is where most people go wrong um right people leave people leave like thousands of dollars on the table every earning season by not doing this part right the results that i show that are sort of the worst case scenario for this particular trade anyway like look i mean they're good right but they can be great so now i want to make this really realistic for you okay like very realistic and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works in real life when you middle the market with the MTM 2520 middling tech. These are some screenshots of my account on an earnings trade that I made in a past earnings season. So this is Oxy. So I, I simply went through my checklist and, and my system identified this trade. So I bought to open 20 of the Oxy February 22nd, 66 calls at $1.49 and sold short 20 of the Oxy February 15th expiration, 66 calls at $1.31. I paid 18 cents. However, the ones that I had to buy February 22nd, they were offered at $1.50, but I didn't pay $1.50. I paid, I paid $1.49. The ones I had to sell were a dollar thirty bid, but I didn't sell them at a dollar thirty. I sold them higher. I sold them at a dollar thirty one, smack dab mid market. So I mean, basically, I sh I should have paid twenty cents, right? But I paid ten percent less. I'm starting this trade off ten percent with a ten percent advantage. So the market closed, earnings came out. Next day, the market opens. I wait for my three things to happen. They did. I put in my offer to sell at 30 cents and I got filled. But I only got filled on two of them. So I just simply followed my rules, stepped down to 27 cents, got filled on the balance. And this was a 51.7% profit uh, in one day, actually in, in less than 24 hours. That's about $279 of profit in money terms, minus commissions. So 51.7% here, the last one was uh, what, 44%, right? Uh, pretty good. 
do all trades work out exactly like this using this system? No. In fact, there are going to be occasional trades where you lose money. You know, I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. And this is one that I traded where I lost money. This is an MGM. Uh, the system identified this trade. I bought the the March 1st 29 puts at 91 cents and I sold the February 15th 29 puts at 71 cents. So I paid 20 cents. The market closed, earnings came out the next day it opened. <clears throat> and this trade just went wildly against. It was, you know, like like really far against me. And so did I panic? No. Because this is a system, you work the system, the system works. I waited patiently for my three things to line up. And once they did, I simply put in my offer to sell and I closed it at 19 cents. That ended up being a 5% loss in that, in that one day. And look, I can go on and on talking about trades uh, that I've made because I've made hundreds of these, right? This is in Las Vegas Sands. I bought the May 3rd, 68 calls at $1.76. Sold the April 18th, 68 calls at $1.26, paid 50 cents. The next day, uh, you know, after earnings comes out, waited for my three things to line up, boom, boom, boom. Sold them at 70 cents, that it's a 40% profit overnight. Comes out to a $300 worth of, you know, profit in money terms minus the very, very small commissions. The key here is consistency. It's driving consistent profits. It, look, I mean, look, if you can make $300 on one trade, $500 on another, $280 on another, and if we're talking about a week where there are hundreds of opportunities, like there are going to be next week, how much money can you make in just a single week? How much money can you make next week using this strategy, trading it like I'm showing you right here? In fact, let's take a little poll. Let's take one more poll before we're done here. What do you guys think? If you can make 300 on one trade, five on another, 280 on another, and there are hundreds of opportunities next week, how much money do you think that you can make just next week michael says seventy five hundred dollars okay charlotte says ten thousand dollars okay and i and i'd like to like really get your feedback come on you've been watching this presentation i want to know larry says twenty five thousand dollars right and it depends on how big your account is somewhat right i mean anybody can do this no matter what size their account is and the best way to get a big account is to start with a small one and grow it right uh dwight says depends yeah right it depends on your account right it depends on if you're following the system like if you can follow a spreadsheet you can do this right uh arnie says twelve thousand five hundred. okay pretty specific um okay so so good answers and and look that's why a consistent system is so powerful and that's why money management is so important Make sense? Like management makes money. That's the three M's of trading. If you can follow a checklist, finding, analyzing, setting up, and making the trade is simple. Closing the trade simple too. We simply take it off the next day, but it requires a little nuance. I'll share a resource to make those nuances super simple in just a moment. This is a system and that's why this is easy. Work the system and the system works. Let's talk about realistic expectations. You create your own reality. As they say, you make your own life. You take the actions that make things happen to make your life what it is. Am I right? Like really, and I'm not trying to be like philosophical here or anything, but don't you believe that's true? You believe the actions you choose determine your future? And if you don't take action, if you do nothing, nothing changes right profitable trading is a reality for many traders we have traders in our online community chat room who are some of our top money making students they're like 
really successful. And they're regular folks, just like you and me, who post their trades real time for all to see. And they've made the decision to be profitable. It's just to simply do it, to make that choice. And by the way, in a moment, I'll reveal how you can get free access to the MTM community chat room for six months. So how often can you find trades like this? Look, I mean, all throughout, I mean, really all throughout the year, there are, oops, really all throughout the year, uh, but they're very, very concentrated in earnings season, right? So you can trade this year round, but they're very concentrated during earnings season, especially next week. Are these returns common? Yes, I literally put screenshots of my general ledger for my trading account. Um, and earnings trades can yield highly leveraged returns with low risk. What if the trade doesn't work out? Well, risk is limited, but more importantly, manageable. And it can be a small fraction of possible gains. Here's how to make this work. This is a simple process anyone can follow and timing is urgent with earnings season already here. You can make the next six months your best of the year and repeat that success in future earnings seasons throughout your entire trading career. You can finally make your trading easy. So this is the total earnings domination all access premium package. In this course, I'm gonna share with you how to replace uncertainty with confidence so you can profit consistently no matter what the stock market's doing using my simple data-driven, real money proven total earnings domination system. Here's just some of what you'll learn. How to easily scan the market for earnings trades where to get real-time data that pinpoint the winning earnings trades, the best time of day for entries and exits, the yes-no screen technique blueprint, the earnings time spread risk checklist to maximize your gains and minimize your losses, calculating the is-was gaps, and, and especially how to manage wide bid ask spreads on closing the trades. That's ultra important. So you now have an opportunity to trade more consistently using a strategy that works great in all market conditions to get a blueprint for earnings trading and watch live setups of earnings trades so you can easily follow along and to make the next few weeks your top performing weeks yet this is our total earnings domination all access six month premium package First of all, let me share what you're gonna get with this class. You begin with the brain dump part of the training, the secrets to trading earnings bootcamp video. I'm gonna put 28 years of my experience into your head with one short video. This is the keys to the kingdom. That's a $2,995 value. Why is it $2,995? Because if you can make the kind of money we're talking about consistently on daily trades throughout this earnings season and for the rest of earnings seasons this year and well, and forever, this small one-time investment can pay you over and over again for a lifetime. That's the goal. And as you can see, there is no auto renewal on any of this. But isn't it important to you to make sure that you can put this knowledge to use, that you can actually do it Today, you're going to get hands-on training. Starting July 26, you'll log in and watch me trade live in a real money account. So you'll see exactly what to do as you follow along with me. You literally see the system being traded in the live market. And you'll make your first trade with me together as a group. This is the ultimate hands-on training. And we literally want you to have this class mastered. So you're also getting the four-part on-demand video masterclass, Earnings Trading Techniques from Two Decades on the CBOE Trading Floor. You'll know exactly what to do every time. This puts the power in your hands. You'll have questions. So today you're also getting six months of the MTM Community Chat Room. You'll log in and get all your questions answered by me or our other coaches. But another huge sort of secret benefit that I shared with you earlier, kind of, 
is that the MTM community chat room is where our top money making traders log in and post their trades live real time. This is an all access premium package worth $7,437, but I want to make this a complete no brainer, completely irresistible, so you can confidently, immediately join us right now. Look. A million mile journey begins with the first step. This step is go right now to markettaker.com slash TED, markettaker.com slash TED. And the first 30 of you who join us will get all this for a small, easy investment of just $497. One, two, three, boom. That's a massive 93% off discount. I want you to go right now to markettaker.com slash TED and join us. Welcome. Now, why would I give such a huge discount? Because earnings season, it, I mean, it's, it's already started. And I want you to be one of the 1,000 trader success stories we strive to create this year. People who take action are the ones that can be great traders. It's that simple. When you see a great opportunity and fearlessly act on it, the sky's the limit. So to reward the traders who, who move forward, this 93% off is valid only for the first 30 people to join us right now at markettaker.com slash TED. And here's an extra special bonus that's not on that last slide. I wanna make sure this works for everyone, regardless of your experience level as an options trader. Even if you're brand new to options and never made an options trade yet, to make sure this works for everyone, today you're going to get the Options Impact video course. This on-demand course levels the playing field for beginner option traders. It covers all the basics you need to begin trading options confidently. Even if you've never traded options before, you'll learn to be able to start trading like someone who's been trading successfully for years. And, and it'll put you on the fast track to maximize your gains this earnings season. And here's the big one. Action takers, you are going to get the course that every one of our top traders has gone through. We're going to share live weekly drill down master sessions together. This is the MTM Trade Smart Workshop. This is where I pull back the curtain each month, we pick a different topic to drill down on and give you expert understanding of it so you can achieve mastery as an option trader. Now, look, I can't open this bonus up to all 30 people. I just can't. Like, I can only invite a handful of traders so I can manage this process with you. I take this very personal. You're investing in your success, and so am I. I want to have quality control, so it's essential that I keep this bonus class very small. Each week, this inner circle group gathers online. The next webinar is uh, tomorrow, actually. You're, it's, this is perfect timing for you. That special webinar tomorrow continues the Profit Driving Volatility Strategies series, which is at the heart of the total earnings domination system. And for your convenience, these are all recorded. With your password access, today you'll instantly get access to the Profit Driving Volatility Strategy Series, as well as the income strategies that continue to work, secrets to better trade bills, hands-on option trade adjustment techniques, and more. Now this is a $1,794 value. But I'm opening this bonus, the big one, up to only the first nine traders who join us right now. This is our fast action bonus. One, two, three, boom. Now look, this earning cycle is one of the most important in the entire history of the stock market. Analysts are waiting to see what the earnings are to give guidance for the future, and that means traders can make more money than they have ever made before. This process has already begun. When you enroll today, 
you will have just enough time to get through the brain dump training of watching the boot camp video and the master class to be ready for the first live class on Monday, July 26th. These are the five most important classes you will attend this year, probably this decade. This earning season is the opportunity of a lifetime for those of you who choose to put that opportunity into action. So it is go time. Those of you who have been waiting for the right trading opportunity, this is an opportunity to change your life. And I want to point something out. When I first launched this, I used to make the total earnings domination course available for three months because I figured it's one earning season, that's all you need. But some people would say, hey, you know what? I'm busy these first two days, I can't make it. And you know they are recorded, but some people like to watch them live. And, and some people would say, you know, Dan, I'm a, I'm a slow learner, I don't know if I can retain it all in three months. And so I decided, you know what I'll do? I'm going to create an all access premium package, give a bunch of bonuses, and not only make this available for the five live classes during Money Week in July, but also for the five live classes during October's Money Week also. These five hands-on training sessions, they're all 100% totally live, and like I said, if you can't make it, they are all recorded. I, in those classes, I will reveal the top earnings trades of the day, each of the five days in these five classes. And I'm going to prove that anyone can do this, regardless of experience or account size. If you don't have a lot of experience with options, that's okay, I'm giving you the Options Impact Quick Start video series. If you have a small account size, here's my guarantee to you. I'm actually trading these trades live with real money. So you can see exactly how it's done and follow along. In fact, I'm using less than $10,000 in my account to show you that anyone can do it, regardless of account size. So it is go time, one, two, three, boom, go to markettaker.com slash TED. Meet Jill from Cincinnati, Ohio. She joined our class, I believe it was uh, a couple quarters ago. She was one, this was one of the first trades she did. And she did it together with us in the live coaching sessions. She bought a Microsoft time spread that met our criteria. I mean, as did I and the other students in the class. She bought the time spread at $2.65. And in less than 24 hours, she sold it for $3.75, lacking in a 41.5% profit. And she posted real time in the MTM community chat room, which you will have the same access to. The MTM community chat room is where all our top money making traders log in and post their trades live real time. If all you got out of the total earnings domination premium package today was to watch some of our top six figure traders posting their trades real time so you could follow along, wouldn't it be worth it just for that? This is David Z from South Lake Tahoe, California. He says, I closed last five at $1.41, total gain, $425, less commissions. The class has paid for itself. Thanks, Dan. And that was just in the first week during the live classes. That was after he made his first couple of trades. Russell Clay, uh, excuse me, Russell K from Glendale, California says, I'm above an 80% win rate. Most of the others were maybe a 5% loss. Only one total loss out of 16 trades. Like you said, middling is really important and waiting for the bid ask to normalize. Just waiting that hour made a few of the trades winners instead of losers. And what he's referencing is that not only are you watching me make those trades live real time in the chat room in the last hour of the trading day, but the next morning, when we're waiting for those three criteria to line up, I'm in the chat room and, and I'm giving guidance. And Russell, like Russell one day is like, hey Dan, you know, is it time to close this trade? I said, no, I'm not going to because this criteria happened, this criterion happened, but this one and this one didn't yet. So I'm gonna wait. And he was about to close it as a loser and he ended up turning 
some of his trades into winners as a result of that. This is Tyler M from Lexington, Tennessee. He says, I took Dan's MTM course about seven years ago in college. It was my first exposure to a structured options trading strategy. He started me down the path that I'm on today. Now I'm a professional options trader at a fund. So whether you have very little experience, whether you never even traded in options, you get the options impact quick start videos. If you're already very experienced, we've trained, trained people to be professional traders. This is a great class for you. Big account, small account. But in order to make this happen, you have to do what Tyler did and what Russell did, what David did, what Jill did, and go right now to markettaker.com slash TED. Um, again, this is valid only for the first 30 people to join us right now. I'm gonna take some questions. Um, and here are a few that I often get. Is this live or recorded? Look, both. I know you have a busy schedule and you're not gonna be able to make all of these live. I get that. So we record them, and those of you who just signed up, and I'm going to read your names in a second, we had a great response. Welcome to all our new traders here. Uh, you have a username and password already. Go ahead and check your inbox. Um, if you don't see it, check your spam. Check the email that you signed up with. But if you can't attend live, you just watch the recordings. How long do I have access to the class? Only with this six-month all-access premium package do you get this for a full six months so you have plenty of time to master the system? Is this time consuming? No, again, I know you have a busy schedule. You can spend years trying to figure this out on your own, but right now is the hottest earning season that you're likely to see in your lifetime. You'll be able to go through this simple course now and start seeing immediate results. In fact, this will save you time so you can spend it doing the things you love with friends and family. How do I know I'll be able to do it? Look, I showed you little screenshots of my account and, and you're gonna watch me trade live. This comes with hands-on training where I'll show you in the live market exactly what to do with real-time trade setups. Now, the number one question we get is, is there a limit on the number of students who can join? Yes, we have to limit the number allowed in the live component of this package or else it gets out of hand with questions. I wanna give each of you my full attention, so we have to limit the number we let in. I have a small team committed to student success. If you're committed to doing your part, we will do ours, and therefore today's limited to the first 30 who are serious about maximizing your gains during earnings season. Now, a lot of times people ask me, well, Dan, what about you know the big one bonus, the fast action bonus? That's the MTM Trade Smart Workshop. Why is, why is that limited to the first nine? Do you have to limit that? And the answer to that is no, I don't have to. But do you know why I do? Because it weeds out the people who are maybe a little bit indecisive, you know, maybe not experienced enough about making trading decisions, frankly, right? If you have to ask your mom every time you're gonna make a trade, like you're not gonna make a good trader. Trading literally is for action trade, action takers. The, the most common trait I see among the best traders that I know is that they take action. So I am looking for you. I am looking for people who are ready to trade. You see a good opportunity, one, two, three, boom, and you just take that action right now. So that's why this is limited to the first nine, because frankly, it gives me the cream of the crop. So go right now to markettaker.com slash TED, and I wanna welcome some of our new traders. Uh, welcome David from Cape Coral, Florida. Congratulations, David, great job joining us today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome Michael from Houston, Texas. Uh, congratulations, Michael. Great job joining us today. And welcome Shelly from Fremont, California. Congratulations, Shelly. You're making it happen for yourself. I love that. Great job. Uh, welcome Thomas from Chicago, Illinois, my hometown. Welcome Thomas. Great job stepping up and investing in yourself today. Warren Buffett said the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. 
Uh, and I believe that to be true. Welcome, Richard from Rockwell, Texas. Great job, Richard. Man, making it happen. Way to way to get over the hump on hump day, man. Uh, welcome, Charlotte. Uh, welcome, Charlotte from Nashville, Tennessee. Awesome. I love that place. Great job, Charlotte. Congratulations and welcome. Um, welcome, Rhonda from Miami, Florida. Congratulations, Rhonda. Can, great job stepping up, investing in yourself. Now, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have got two more spots left for the big one bonus. These will be gone within minutes. So if you are the kind of trader who takes action, who, who feels like you can be one of our 1000 trader success stories, we want you to be one because this class is designed to help you be one. Because this class is only for our elite, for our top traders. I personally teach this and, and teach things that I learned down on the trading floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange. This is a drill down class. If you've been trading for 20 years, you're gonna get a ton out of this class. If you're brand new to it, that's okay too, because I break down the concepts and make them easy for anyone to understand. Um, welcome, Arne. Great job, Arne. Uh, great job stepping up and investing in yourself today. I love it. That means there's one spot left and uh, we are gonna have to go here. Um, Sherry's gonna get out the big cane and drag me off the stage. So who's gonna take the last spot here? One, two, three, boom. And in the meantime, also keep in mind that it is crunch time. Monday, July 26th, starting at three o'clock p.m. Eastern time. That is the first class in this series. You've got to get through the boot camp and the four part masterclass. And some people watch the boot camp twice. So it really is go time. You're going to have just enough time to get through, to get through uh, the material to be ready for that class on, on July 26th. Um, so thank you all for your time. Oh, I saw, just saw a couple more orders come through. Great. Uh, if there's anybody in the process, we're, I'm going to give the last couple sort of a tie in ninth place here, but uh, you need to finish filling out that form right now. Um, and again, you can go to marktaker.com slash TED. Oh, let me just see really quick. Got a couple of um, questions. Yeah. Uh, MY says, do we only do options? Uh, or yes, this is an option trading strategy. Okay, since, since I didn't realize there's questions, if you're filling out the form, go ahead. You're still going to get the big one bonus. Sherry, do you want to read the questions? Is that customary? Yeah, he wants to know, do you only trade options? You do other things, but this this course is about options. Yeah, this this course is only option trading. That's right, because you, you need options in order to take advantage of this because it's non-direction. Okay, then um, let's see. Uh, everybody asking where the recordings are. Can you explain again the three things that need to line up in your trade? Yeah, uh, I mean, we're kind of out of time here. Um, okay, so he should give you, a, he should email you or give you a call, right? How do we, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, you can, uh, he can email me, but I mean, look, the best thing to do is, I mean, if you're ready to make this happen for yourself, that's all covered in this course. So just go to markettaker.com and sign up and join like that that is the best way to do this all right you're right sir i got the big hook ready for you and i really <laughs> appreciate you being with us today let me see i've got one last yeah. final thing and uh everybody i have posted markettaker.com forward slash ted in the chat if you didn't get your questions answered, please do reach out to Market Taker Mentoring, markettaker.com. I'm sure there's a spot there for you to be able to chat with someone or um, get an email into them. And um, I really, I, I hope you all trade well. I just want to show you uh, this has been a presentation of tradersexclusive.com. We've got our Twitter is options underscore info. 
Um, we're going to be posting the recording of this webinar today at our site, tradersexclusive.com forward slash archived underscore webinars. And you'll also get email and follow ups from all of our speakers. So please take a look at them. And um, I'm uh, this is Sherry, and I'm saying everybody should I hope you trade well. Bye bye now.